Yo, 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 we're back with another episode. I'm Godswell, we got Josh, and we got a special guest. We got Kizzy K. He is a homie uh, who I've been looking up to. Uh, I always like seeing him, especially at these uh, fighting game competition events. Uh, he just moved back recently, so I was like, yo, you should come on the show. I know you got hella shit to talk about. And I, I'm super hyped to have you on, man. So thanks for coming through. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So can you tell us your history? Like, I just want, I've been also very interested, like, what is your history with the fighting game community? Um, you know, you're, you're, you're up there with it. Uh, so I started uh, getting into, like, the fighting game community aspect, uh, I want to say, like, 2013. Damn. Uh, like, I would say, like, actually going to, like, events and things like that. So, like, 2013. <laughs> So, uh, obviously, I was a young uh, young cat. So, uh, you know, just getting in my foot in and just kind of seeing, like, like what's around and, like, oh, it's, like, mad games here. You know, just kind of, like, learning and adapting to, like, the environment and stuff. And then, like, once I kind of, like, sat down, I just played people that was, like, relatively, like, veterans in the scene and, like, how well I did. I was like, oh, I definitely could do this. You know what I mean? It was kind of like a snap in my head. I was like, oh, I definitely do it. I just keep playing and, get, and, like, work hard and, like, play these guys, right? So, um, what game, you know, what game also did you play? Uh, so the first game that I started was Blaze Blue, like okay. at, at there, and then Blaze Blue, and then Ultra Street Fighter. Well, Street Fighter 4 2012, and then they switched to Ultra like right after I went there after my first right. game. Yeah, how'd so, you feel about that game, Street Fighter 4? Because I remember like a lot of people were like, it was the I don't know if you remember it very well, you probably do because yeah. you're playing <laughs> that game was a big deal for Street Fighter to make its return. But then everyone was like, yo, these models are clunky looking. It, the game didn't feel the greatest. Like, how was it Street Fighter 4 that people complain about? Yeah. Oh, well, the, well, well, well it, was five, it was five that people complained about. Ultra, Ultra Street Fighter 4, people start complaining about it because there was a character that actually got really, really strong. And, like, nobody couldn't really, like, like, a lot of the cast kind of got, like, dismissed if they fought that character. Oh, and that man. was Elena. So when Elena came out, you know, people made like jokes like, "Oh my God, Heel Fighter Five and all this other stuff and things like that." Because like she had a uh, she had a uh, ultra where uh, if you like, there's a mechanic called revenge meter or uh, ultra meter, and basically the more you take hits or the more you take chip damage, it builds the meter. So she has one of the she has an ultra super that heals her. So like, imagine like a character taking damage and you heal. Right, oh, that's crazy in a fighting game, right? <laughs> right, right. And there were mechanics where you could like use like focus attack to like absorb hits, and like even though you absorb the hit, it gradually heals back, but you still get that revenge meter. So like there were people, so characters that throw fireball can't throw fireballs because they can stack it up and then heal. Wow. So it, like yeah, it like stops a lot of game plans. So like a lot of people didn't really like that character particularly, but. Five was the one that everybody really hated the most. What was the what was the main difference? Why why five over four or six even? So when five first came out, it had a very very terrible launch. I would say one of the worst launches in fighting games in a long time, and uh, mainly was because uh, this was when PS4. Everybody thought the PS4 was like this revolutionary console. Now let's be honest, like PS4 was just like a baby step from a PS3. Yeah, and, honestly, I I, yeah. Whole, I have a whole thing to say about that, but please yeah, continue. <laughs> you know, games games still being thirty FPS. Remasters are the only game. Re, excuse me, remasters was the only sixty FPS games. It was only remasters from the older games, right? That ran sixty FPS, right? Until we got the PS4 Pro. So before that, Street Fighter came out uh, around February. So at the the PS4 Pro wasn't available at that time. So fighting games, uh, Sony had a big history of having huge input latency in their fighting games at launch. So imagine like you're trying to press a button and the game had like seven frames of lag on top of like all the lag on like the monitor and things like that. So imagine paying for like, imagine playing for like $250,000 and like you have to play in that. It was like very tedious, not fun. Um, they watered, this was like the first game of like trying to go like esports. So they really like uh, homogenize a lot of the mechanics of like fighting games in general uh, and Street Fighter in general. So they added like less mechanics and more like just raw gameplay. 
Uh, it wasn't really exciting. Uh, but as the game progressed, it got better. But, you know, that first two years was really bad. Mm. Really, really bad. It was a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And then the game became one of the best games season four. Really? Yeah. How many seasons Wait. did uh, Street Fighter Five have? Five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow, but season four, that's when it got good again, huh? Yeah, it got really good. But that okay. was when we were in a pandemic. So, um... yeah, so then the net code was actually not that good. So despite it being like a really good season, it was very hard to play because there mm-hmm. was no offline events because that was during the pandemic. You said that they had to like incorporate a lot of new uh, mechanics and make it like uh, fun, right? Yeah. So and five didn't have that. So what happened with six? Like, is that why six in- incorporated their new uh, their little drive gauge? Is that like a thing where they they felt like they needed to do that because they need some kind of mechanic? Because and would it be fair to say that for Street Fighter, the game alone, like just the footsies of the game, isn't enough to hold that game up? Yeah, you know, like as much as people talk about footsies, a lot of people don't want to play it. You know, like. Also, and, wait, what is and, footsies? And, what is footsies? Is that like just taking chip damage from okay, each other? So footsies is kind of like a boxing uh, type of footwork. So like uh, uh, it's boxing uses this a lot. And basically what you do is that your your goal is to try to uh, trick the opponent of doing something to like get a response and counter it, right? So you're using like movement. You're using like bluffs. You know, you're also like getting in ranges where like you could get hit. But then you kind of step out and have something like countering that bait that you're trying to do. So that's kind of like the essence of like surface level of footsies, right? And it's obviously layers into it. And there's like many layers to it that we could go to. But uh, for that example, is like that is like the essence of footsies, right? It's like count with punishing, right? That's kind of like you see in sports. You, know, you see somebody throw like a strike, they duck, hit, right? Counter attack, like things like that. That's, that's what footsies is. So what people say, is that I love to hear, you know, all the time. It's like, you know, people be like, oh, I want games to, like, play footsie bits. But uh, as a spectator, that is not enjoyable. You know, that's why UFC mm-hmm. is so popular. It's because UFC has more of those chances of, like, those surprise knockouts, right? And that that's what people want to see. So games, think about it as, like, fighting games. We, like, we need more knockout, me- like, mechanics, right? So that's why you got moves, like, you know, like drive impact and things like that because, and you hear like that sound effect, it sounds like somebody got knocked out, right? Like that's why people are like very fast because now you can't react. So it becomes like a, like a slug fest and things like that. It breaks right? out the, uh, it, it breaks up the cerebral game of like to the players where they in, like, especially the higher, the mid-level, mid-level to higher players, the footsies become everything. It may, it's what separates you from everybody else, right? Like the layers of like, how I'm setting the dude up and how I'm making sure that he thinks I'm going in. And then when yep. as soon as he attacks, I hit him instead. I yeah. knew what was going to happen. Yeah. But to people who are just watching, it looks like two guys, just like in a boxing match or an MMA fight with two high-level guys, it's just two guys looking at each other. Yeah. And they're like, Cause they, oh, because they know. Oh, punch. Yeah. Like, but, but they don't understand that, like, this guy is one of the best grapplers in the world. Why would I try to go in? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then the guy who's a grappler, yo, this dude the, has the best keep out in the world. So I have to, like, be cautious. Well, he's expecting it. He's expecting the knee already. He's like, yeah. I already knee stomach. If I go in right now, it's, it's happening. And exactly. everyone's like, bro, what are they doing? But imagine if there was a drive gauge. You just appeared on top of him. Exactly, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Everybody be like, you know, best thing ever, right? So they're trying to, like, find, like, that middle ground. And, like, a lot of people haven't cracked the code yet. But I, as a visual, I, like, I'm very, like, methodical and, like, shit like this. So I kind of, like, kind of see, like, how it is. Because I'm like, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. It's just different looks, right? Uh, but basically, they're trying to add a little bit more luck in the skill set in a lot of things. And that's what builds confidence to people to keep trying. It's like a lottery, you know, like, you know, you pay $5, you might win a million dollars, you know? And that's kind of like, if you keep going, you know, eventually you'll make it and you'll feel good. You know, you may not get a million dollars, but you got $5,000. But that's kind of like fighting games where you get in and you like play, like you play it out and like, you know, it's more of like, yo, try it out, give it a chance, you know, things like that. We're going to even give you like uh, controls that does that. And I, and I like that. A lot. Uh, obviously, like as a skillful player, it kind of sucks. But I like companies that at least try to balance it. You know, like let it let it be like an e- equal footing. You know, let the chaos be there, but also let the skill set like control the chaos fine. if you're mm-hmm. good at it. Right. Yeah. And I and I'm okay with that. You know, because I I want people to get into the series, and I know that there has to be sacrifices. 
as much as I don't want it to be sacrifices, but it has <laughs> to be, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. Like I'm trying to figure out, like I'm a new guy, like trying to get in street fire six. I'm, I was like, let me give it another chance. I just got a PS five with a disc finally, so I can play the PS four version of PS five. But when I was playing, I got my ass super kicked, like, disturbingly so i think that i was just like i'm gonna quit <laughs> i'm gonna go back to my single player games but hearing you talk about it makes me want to get back into it again and i don't know how to feel about modern controls like should i try to do these classic controls and try to be like you guys or should i just... play modern controls bro just, one right. of the best players in the world got top eight evil with modern controls and that, and that <laughs> player is high time okay. yeah i was about to say like I, I had a hard time because, like, my thing is, I picked up. I was a Smash Bros. player, uh-huh. so I was a. I played a lot of Smash Bros. Uh, I got pretty pretty deep into that game, and then it was like that was my first competitive game, and that came out at the same time as when you got kind of got competitive, two thousand thirteen, right? Yeah. I think it was 13, yeah. 2020. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, in Smash Four, so I was like taking it very seriously, going to tournaments, all that good stuff. And then when I I was like, okay, but everyone's always like, that's not a real fighting game. You got to play a fighting game, bro. Yeah. So finally, I was like, all right, I've I've done with Smash Bros. I moved on to other things. I've been playing a lot of other games. Like, let me try a real fighting game. I picked up Street <laughs> Fighter Six. I love that. Yeah. Real. Yeah. Let me try the. It I, feels like a real fighting, fighting game. Fighting. Like, yeah. I feel like Smash. Yeah. Smash is like golf. You know, like it's nerd golf. That's why I call it. You know, everyone knows how to do it. Even if you don't know how to do it, you know, still go out to the range, have a good time. But then. The real fighting games, you know, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, and for sure Street Fighter. And I want to get good at one of those myself too. But I would I, say, I would say with these real fighters, I, I wouldn't try. I wasn't trying to slight the Smash Bros. community. I think Smash is like hella in depth. I think yeah. the game is very deep. Yeah. It just plays differently. There's a lot more neutral options because of the movement in the air and shit. But it's like uh, all the same mechanics apply. If you're good at footsies, you can be good at footsies in Smash. Same thing. It's like it's all different stuff. Um, but it's anyway, I, what I was, what I was going to get to at the end was like, uh, I want to get into a game that had like quarter circles. That's how yes. fighting game, right? Cause Tekken, if you can play Tekken, you could probably play street fighter. The next day you can play street fighter. You might be able to do the inputs for mortal Kombat. even though mortal Kombat's very tight with its inputs. Right. Yeah. Like all this stuff is like, uh, if you can learn one, you can learn all of them eventually. So I got into street fighter and I picked up Jamie and everyone was like, oh, he's ass. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, play Jamie. But my issue was being like. As I'm playing this game, I'm like, uh, this seems like, uh, how can I put it? It's like the, one of the main things that happened was the, the fight between modern controls and classic. And I was l- trying to learn classic. That's why I started playing the game. And then when people were like, oh, why is this? I, I realized like within a day, I was like, how is that man reacting to me jumping in the air <laughs> so quickly? Yeah, 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 like, maybe yeah. I'm just old. I was really like, maybe I suck ass, bro. And I realized, I was like, oh, the M in the corner, this man's on modern. I remember yeah. that was like day two. He's a modern, bro. Just, I was like, and the, the Zangief modern players? Yeah. That's it, bro. It's a I call, you can't I call, get near him. I call all the modern, play, uh, the modern players modern. I'm like, oh, he's a modern, bro. I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. see, that's what I want to avoid. Like, I want to be like, I beat you, but like, I did it like, like how it's supposed to be. I feel like, yeah, modern controls, but... I feel like there's like that sort of stigma there, you know. At least I've. Am it, I wrong with that? It, it is. It is a stigma, and like you know, <laughs> even people who are casual come after come after modern plans, which it blows my mind. But uh, you know, it does have a stigma, and um, but you know, uh, modern controls definitely have like some faults. Uh, but I feel like it, it's only you're only able to crack that if you're uh investing heavy in, like into the game, and you're like you know, like, how to fight, like, this modern character. Like, a modern character versus, like, the character, like, 90% of the cast, modern and, like, classic, it's, like, a different matchup, right? So, you know, Ryu's going to do fireball Shoryuken. So, like, I can't jump because he has a forward button Shoryuken, right? He can't mm-hmm. he can't screw that up. So, I have to, like, try to take advantage of, like, all right, what normals do he not have? All right, he has, he don't have these normals. So that means I can, like, walk up and, like, abuse the fact that he doesn't have these normals. And, like, oh, what's his fastest normal? Oh, this normal? Okay. Well, he can't use this normal, so I have to, like, I take advantage of that. But that's a lot of work. You have to really, like, take into account of, like, all these little variables. And, like, for an average player, I don't think it's going to be very uh, easy for them to do. So that's why the stigma will, will never leave. But I, I, I tell people to play, like, 
monitor. I'm like, yo, if this, if you have fun playing it, play it. And like, you know, that's what people are just going to say, but you know, tell them get good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you know what I mean? I, some characters, when I find a character I never find in modern, I'm like, all right, what they have and what they don't have. And I have to play that game of chicken. Oh, okay, they don't got that? All right, well, I can just do this now. So it's like process of elimination. It's like really hard for a lot of people. Yeah. Like, I mean, like- I'm trying to do like Manon, right? And I, I was trying to learn classic, you know, from not being able to play this game. My my history with Street Fighter, let me tell you a little bit, right? Street Fighter 4, I tried to do it on PS3, right? And I couldn't do the storyline mission like i try that normal mode i usually do my games on hard mode oh boy i usually do my games on hard mode and like this time you know fighting games is so different you know i played smash i'm pretty good at that at least i thought i was and then street fighter 4 get my ass beat normal mode easy mode very easy mode and then easiest mode maybe i practice 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 do all the challenge rooms you know try to learn reuse moves right I go online, get my ass horribly beat, try to do normal mode again, horribly beat, can't do very easy, or e- I can't do easy mode. I'm like, you know, maybe this game's not for me. Then I try to get back with Street Fighter 6. I'm trying to do Manon, you know, with her command tro- throws. And I'm playing online. I'm getting like a few wins every now and then, but then there's this one guy. And like, he's just parrying, just standing still, parrying, waiting for me to do this command grow. I'm having a hard time doing this command throw. And... I can't hit it, and it the, the the match lasts for like five minutes because he's just standing there, and I can't hit. And I'm like, maybe this game's not for me. <laughs> uh, and then I go uh, in in person to a barcade, like to a barcade, right? Yeah, um, barcode. Bar yeah, code. barcode. There we go. Yep. Yeah. That's why. And I get beat twenty times in a row. Sometimes I think eight times. Uh, perfect KO. And I'm oh. like, maybe this game's not for me. <laughs> 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 So that's that's and then I, I was trying to do classic controls. Maybe I'll try it one more time with modern controls. I definitely think you should try modern controls because once you kind of learn, like, oh, I can just do this move and respond to this. The goal is just to like be able to like engage with your opponent rather than to like win, right? Because you're trying to like get a feel of like how does it feel to be in this situation, so you can relate. So when you watch it, you can be like, oh man. I would have got hit there or like, oh man, like that was so smart. The fact that he got out, like now you're able to relate to it. It's like how we just grab a basketball. We start hooping mm. and like, you know how hard a fadeaway it is. Yeah. So like when somebody turn around, do a fadeaway, we pop off because we have that experience of doing a fadeaway with us, like amongst ourselves. So with fighting games, you just want to get to that point where you could do something that's relatable to what you're watching. And modern controls open the barriers for that. Yeah, this is going to, I was going to go into this in a second because I was like, that right there. How do you feel about this? A lot of games currently are going to this, this phase where they're going to uh, easier controls. They're straight up just being like, yo, fuck the quarter circle, fuck the half circle, the, the, the full, you know, the, the Zangi uh, full circle twice, like n- nonsensical. Like, like, yo, click a button, make it happen. And me personally, that's one of the things I think personally when I played Soul Calibur, when I played Smash, I enjoyed how simple the controls were because like whatever I thought I wanted to do, generally, the Smash should have a couple things, the wave dash, all this stuff. It had things. But it's like generally if I thought about it, I could do it. And if the guy beats me, it's because he's a better player than me. Right. Like it wasn't because I didn't I, – I missed an input. It wasn't that. It was like, yo, that guy set up traps. He set up frame traps on me. I was, I was getting red up. I lost my cool, whatever. Currently, we have a game called uh, Project L coming out, right? Uh, riots game, they 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 put that as like the forefront. They're like, yo, everything in this game is easy inputs. Everything is like forward, whatever. Duh, 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 those are your specials, and then you have your standard moves right here. And most likely, it's riot games. We already know that game's gonna pop off for at least a week, at least minimal. You know, people are gonna give it a shot. So, how do you feel about that and how the gaming industry? Because, like, I mean, personally, I didn't even try Mortal Kombat one, bro. I said I'm good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm good, bro. I don't care. Yeah. Me too. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm I'm fine with uh, easy controls kind of being like that the the advertisement aspect. Uh, one thing I like about Street Fighter and like Grand Blue Fantasy Day is it kind of lets you have choose both, and I like that. Um, I like the fact that um, now if they if the the problem is with like making things that are just 
easy inputs. It's like it's good, and like you'll have to do a lot to put in the game where it doesn't feel like too easy. But it's like a mind game that is like exciting. You get what I'm saying? So like you have to kind of meet both of those like sides. And it's very hard to do. And let me explain to you why. It's because one of the big when I got a chance to play Project L, and one of the biggest things that I felt, and I was like, despite this game, like, or and even people that were there, like they felt the same way. I was like, man, like this doesn't feel like a, a, a game for new players. And and notice that it's for like it's easy inputs and things like that. I'm like, this doesn't feel like like somebody that never played a fighting game before can get in and like just play it play like they they get ran over. You know, like it felt that way. I was like, wow. So like I feel like a lot of companies they miss the they miss a lot of the, the core elements of like if you make a simple input game, what do you need to bring with it? Because players that are very smart are going to solve the game very fast because the game is simple inputs. So like most combos are going to look the same because this is the easiest, most optimum, effective way to do it. And then you have that issue. You have situational combos going gone because it's only going to be that one move that you saw because it's very easy to do. So like with those little things that are uh, previous in older games, like, new fighting games has to kind of, like, add an element to keep that identity alive that makes it exciting to play. And I personally think that adding those easy inputs is good. Uh, but I don't think that it's executed perfectly. And I think that it's always a, 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 a thing where, like, as you said, people play it for a week and everybody solves the game. You know, like a game being like, oh, well, I, I solved the character. You just do this combo because it's the most optimal combo. You know, and it's like because you don't have a lot of emotions and controls to, to work with. So I think that what they should do is they should always have both controls accessible for both players. And I think there should be pros and cons with each, right? The con is the inputs, and then the pros is like, you know, like what I like what Granblue did. It was like, all right, well, if you do a fireball with a special skill, it does like less damage. And the damage is, is different. It's like I, I could give you an example. Like, one of the damage is, like, 880 for doing the technical version. The skill version, the easy to, uh, easy input, 800. That's not bad, right? It's like 10%, but, yeah. Yeah, but the, at the high level, like, that, that extra damage takes, like, it's going to carry a lot. So they should balance stuff like that, in my opinion, because I just think that a player playing a motion control or uh, easy inputs, they can still be – they could be a good player and still win and feel like their efforts is being invested. While a technical player can still have that. Also, I put in mad work doing all of this in my damage. You know, I got optimal damage, situation, things like that. I, I like that give and take because now everybody's happy. Now, would you not – my bad. You better say something, guys? No. No, I was going to say, so I, I'm, 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 I'm like kind of – you're getting me to think about it. But I'm on that other fence to where I'm just like, I'm cool with them having the option, but kind of like that stigma is attached to it right now because there are those technical players and they will always kind of hot, raise their nose to the the modern control players. Because I, I play technical on a uh, Street Fighter, but I like I hate modern controls because I'm a technical player. Yeah. Like, well, you ain't do nothing to hit that <laughs> right? But it's like realistically, if they got rid of it, you 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 just destroy that break, right? So there would be no more dispute. You make a new game. And I'm like, like we've talked about with Smash Bros and games like that, it's like you can still have technicality without having the controls be difficult, right? Like the footsies of the game, the mechanics you put into the game, the uh, just the overall neutral, who has fireballs, who does who does what, who has better range. These things are all going to like the poking, everything's going to come into play. Um, I don't think you lose too much in my eyes. I mean, you're a higher level player than I was in either of my games. So no, it's like, that's a good question. That's yeah, a really there's good other question. ways to make the game enjoyable and like advanced without making it like hard to input right yeah. that's what i'm saying and, and i and i think if they do that then that means that combo shouldn't be technically a big thing because what happened like right. for example when you look at smash smash is like a very specific situation of combos okay he has low percentage i could go for like this this sick ass combo that i trained right but if they have mm -hmm. higher percentage they get launched farther right 
So the game is just heavy neutral from like a certain percentage, right? But the right. dynamic, the dynamic of it is that like every character has so much personality that like it's it's pretty to watch. You know, you got like you see like Link pulling out his like grenade or bomb, you know, shooting the arrows, things like that, right? Like he it's cool, right? And also you're you're also playing footsies because of it's a platform. Because you're like, oh, I need to jump here, I need to react here. He's trying to land, so let me run under, you know, things like that. So like it's a it's very just movement based. But notice that it's not combos, right? Like when I watch Smash, I don't see somebody getting combo to death. I see people getting like out footsie to death, right? Or out right. space to death, right? So if you make if we make fighting games with easy uh like e- easy controls, then I feel like then certain things that has to be taken away naturally because like combos, for example, once it becomes like super easy, right? Naturally by design with different archetypes, there are some archetypes that would just naturally shine. Naturally automatic. And because of like, you know, easy controls, right? And like that would make a lot of players that are are high level players, different archetypes starts to like get removed. Where it's like only one playstyle. And like I I personally am like, well, if they want to do that, then I feel like the best thing they can do is go the direction like Grand Blue did. Because Grand Blue is not really about combos, but then they add like mechanics that kind of make it about combos, right? And I think if they want to add mechanics and like you spend the bar for it and things like that, I think that would be fine. But right now, companies are making like super fast, very combo oriented, you know, like tag uh, tag games and things like that, like super hype, things like that. So if we go in that route, I feel like in the, the easy controls, it, it will be very, very hard for players that are super veterans now to like stick with it. Or the, the other one option they can do is that they can just wait for these motherfuckers to get old, and then the new generation will be the new veteran players, and we don't have to worry about any of it. So, yeah, bro, it's happening. It's it not, is I got happening. gray hairs and shit, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, personally for me, if I was a modern player, and like, I mean, to, to be fair, most people that are like vet, uh, veteran players, and I'm talking about like the real veterans, not just like, the badge, I'm a veteran player, like the real veteran players, they support <laughs> they support modern control players. I support modern control players. I can name so many big names that support modern control players because we all want you guys to play. New so people, whatever, yeah. Yeah, we, whatever makes you guys comfortable, do it. Play the game. Yeah, in, my, in my head, oh, my bad. Go ahead, bro. Nah, go ahead. I was about to say, in my head, like the bar of entry to just start a fighting game, First off, it's daunting, right? Because, like, when you play a fighting game, you're playing against a person. You're not playing against an AI. And normally the AIs aren't even very smart. The AI is <laughs> programmed to be an idiot <laughs> in most games. So you can win and feel good, right? You're, like, you're playing you're playing uh, Super Mario Galaxy. The Goomba's not really trying to space you out, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just stomp on his ass. You're like, God, I'm good. I'm fucking good at this game. Yeah. But it's like, as soon as you get against, like, when you want to play a fighting game, like, I try to get my girl... Like that, I guess she doesn't exist. But if she was here, I'm trying to get her into a fighting game. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, play this fighting game, pick up a character, and I got to send her online and get this nigga who's about to teabag her because she oh, yeah, you might, yeah, you might get smoked. And she can't get the inputs in, bro. It's yeah. it's a rough world. It's and rough. that's why mono controls is good because then now they don't they can just get in and just do this do the things yeah. that they want to do, and I like that because I want I people think, to, to get the feeling of right. how it feels to play. I think that's where the game, the, I think that's where the industry is going to go, though. And I say that because, like, remember Smash Bros, while it did have a lot of IPs, and that's what made it big, right? It had Mario, it had all the stuff. The accessibility at parties, I told this to guys a while back, remember, I, I, we talked about it. I was like, yo, being good at Smash Bros is such a good skill to have as a <laughs> yeah. work, as a work uh, opportunity. Because you will meet some people world, at work right? parties. Yeah. Everyone wants to be like, oh, let's play some Smash. And then all of a sudden, people from work will hit you up and be like, hey, you were the guy who was good, right? All of a sudden, you're getting, you're getting connections and shit. <laughs> That's why I call nerd golf. Right. Ain't no one playing Mortal Kombat at the work party, dog. <laughs> yeah, everybody playing Smash. Like, I'm like, yo, yo, we teaming up. Roy Mark, bro. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I can be drunk. I can hit A, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I like I like the aspect of that too. I think I think Smash is definitely the best, like, yo, we going to a party and we all gonna get some drinks and then we're gonna play some Smash. Right? So I, I it's like it, it's like the perfect for everything, right? And I think fighting games, uh, What's going to happen 
is that IP is going to have to help a lot. Because you know what game that actually kicked off really well? Dragon Ball. Both versus? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dragon yeah, Ball. I'm about to say, mm. Oh, Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball. Fighter, yeah, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That game got a lot of people that never played a fighting game got into the game because they introduced like mechanics that were super accessible while also keeping like a little like the little motion control. Like they they did like uh you know half circle forwards, half circle backs. They kept that in there. They kept the deep little motion. ones. Yeah, little ones, but they didn't get you like the up forward, down left, cross. Yeah. They, they they could they got rid of those. But then they kept they had like auto combos and stuff like that. Auto combos were very like heavy into the game. So like even the new even the veteran players did it. But they they started like breaking the game down and start adding more elements where like you can like extend more that is for you know newer players. But that's the problem that I don't like is that I want that to be there at launch, not every new season. You like open right. the game for players that who want to like explore jump you know? in yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, because yeah and, that's that's one of my big things like i would love to play more fighting games you know uh but i do feel honestly that fear you know of like of like will i be able to like survive in this world you know like while i'm trying to learn um you know it's like street fire 6 made me feel sad in ways i didn't think i could feel sad uh it's just like oh i don't know if it's for me anymore <laughs> honestly you know? i i recommend the game you guys should try is grand blue versus rising grand blue okay yeah okay that's so that's like the one for like people to get jump into huh yeah you know it has a free-to-play version of it so you know we got to spend and if you buy the standard version it's 50 bucks and if you want to buy the deluxe it's 75 and i recommend people buying playing the free-to-play version and just kind of getting to feel like it's a slower version of street fighter Oh, yeah. well, hold up, because y'all the way you said that, right? He said, hey, I know y'all are babies. I know the game might be right up y'all's alley. <laughs> I mean, I play I play the game, so I'm a baby, too. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I'm a baby, too. I was playing that shit like 20 minutes ago. I'm a baby, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, like, my thing. Is like, I, like, the FGC has been so cool to me, honestly. Like, when I went to Evo this past year for the first time, like, I was really wowed by, like, how nice everybody was, you know? Like, how everybody was like, yeah, just jump in. We're going to help you. Join my Discord. You know, we'll, we'll we'll work together on this, you know? And, like, coworkers have been nice. Uh, friends out here have been nice. You know, even the guy who beat my ass 20 times in a row. Oh, <laughs> he was nice. <laughs> Although he did it to me like that. Um, no, even the guy online who was just parrying and just waiting for me to make a throw. I don't I, – I, at least I'll give him the – the grace to be like he was nice he could have kicked my ass immediately and just left right but he was trying to help me to get my command throw yeah uh you know like i, I think the community is nice it just feels like it, it does feel bad. hard to get into yeah it feels bad to suck you yeah know? like yeah. It, it, it really feels bad and like it's a mental it, it hurts mentally you know so mm -hmm. like it's nothing wrong to like feel that way uh i think that is a very healthy way to feel it's just about a matter of like you know, getting back into it and like trying again and trying again and trying again, right? Yeah. And like some sometimes it, it might feel like, damn, like like this is awful. But like some of the best players in the world, they were just like you. Like sit, like I I can I there's one player, uh, his name is Filipino Champ, and like I like when he first played, I seen some of the videos. That dude was bad. <laughs> like he was awful, right? And I was like, okay. And now I see him now. He goes to, to like the Asia uh, area region, and he's winning tournaments with like a mid tier character. And everybody's playing like the best characters in the game. And I'm like, bro, how is he winning? And it's just because he's that good. And like he he's one of those guys that work really hard, and like he's a grinder. So I just feel like if you want to get into that, like more like I want to learn this motion input, I'm gonna just like do it like hour a day doing the input doing the input doing this side all right my hands cramping take a break you know what i mean watch watch the little videos how to do the motion controls things like that it's oh, just I'm, about gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there my big boy uh -huh. <laughs> i'm gonna stop you right there kizzy <laughs> kizzy king bro i'm gonna stop you an hour a day my boy <laughs> you know <laughs> <I'm a full -time laughs> <job>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, Steve, 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 into right Steve, now. Steve, Steve Deck, baby. Steve Deck. You know, bring it out to work. You know, 30 minutes. You know, eat your little snack. You know, things like that. But 
you know, yeah, you know, it it is a time investment, but that's why I think motion like monitor controls solve that issue because you now you don't have to put that time in. You can just put the time of how to win against your opponent, and that I think is more helpful to learn how to play fighting games than to like you know get down to like the heavy investment aspect of it. Just learn right. how to play it. I okay, like, like I like because you can learn how to play. You can learn. You can practice your spacing and monitor control. You can practice your anti air and monitor control. You can practice your whip punches and monitor control. You can practice all of those things to make you know a, a good player. And then, like, once you want to take it to the next level, then you have the accessibility to do so. But you could really, you could continue on winning like that. There's nothing wrong with that. And if people complain right. about it, get good. So, you know? Yeah, I remember, because especially when I stopped playing Smash, uh, Smash Ultimate came out. I went to, like, one more, two more tournaments, but I was pretty much done. I was washed up at that point. So I was like, all right, cool, cool game, whatever. I do remember, like, I would practice a lot. Like, when I started getting better at Smash 4 and I got to, like, that higher-end uh, player status, it was like, I would do this thing where I would, I think it was 15 minutes every time I, even though I was playing online, 15 minutes a day, you'd be online, uh, work, or you'd be in the practice room before you even get to go online. And you have to work your your short hops. You had to work all these little mechanics. Oh, yeah, things, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Can you not yeah. short hop perfectly every time? Can you not yeah. uh, you do your nair, neutral, whatever, and do your down air combo? Like, make sure you're hitting everything perfectly. And I'd hit it like 10 times each, 10 times each, go to the next thing. I had a list, list on my phone. I was also unemployed that year. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? Like, yeah. I'm like, I liked when I was able to just be like, hey, like I play, I was you just playing focus. Fortnite. I jumped on, I was playing Fortnite for a little bit. Fortnite, I learned the guns and that was it. It's like, now can you aim? <laughs> right, <laughs> that's right, what that game right. Is asking. See, can that's you why, aim? See, that's why I think when, if people play fighting games as a kid, it's easier to get back into it. Yeah. Rather than yeah. like never playing that genre before and getting into it. Because it's like a different language, very. And like you have to learn it. Yeah, know? like I think like like practice. Like I don't think I've ever like practiced for a game. You know, like uh, I don't know. Yeah, like I, I even find the idea of like okay, I just go to like a practice a practice mode and just wail on a dummy. I guess you know, <laughs> like or you know, just practicing moves like that. And I'm like, I really gotta get into that mindset, huh? Yeah, I think that's the. I think that might be one of the biggest issues. I don't. And I, I, I hate to say it because, like, I think practice is important for anything you want to be successful at. You will have to practice. If you're going to be good at anything. If we're talking about even Apex, when I was playing Apex, I would go to the training room before my game would start. Okay. You've got to hit your shit. Like, you yeah. have to make sure you're feeling, like, tuned in. See, that's why I'm going. But, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> my thing is, like, but it's like when you're doing these things, I don't think a standard person, especially, like, when you become an adult, you're over the age of 25, 28, you have a job. When you get home, you want to just be able to jump in with your boys and, like, let's shit push the clock. That's what, that's normal what people aim for. Let's get to plat. Yeah. Right? But if they can't get to plat without putting in, you know, 20 minutes of practice every day. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna make, it's going to be hard, you know? And that that's the issue with the fighting. I think, and we've always known this, and you were with Panda Global, correct? So yeah. you understand how fighting games, you understand the stats on fighting games. Fighting games are the, the main genre that always has that thing where they peak at a point. Like, when, right when they come out, they peak, and the player base like, cuts in half. Yeah, because it's discouraging. People are like, man. I can't keep up with this. It's yeah. discouraging. It's discouraging, bro. It really is. But honestly, Street Fighter Six is probably doing the best in terms of a casual audience. That's why Capcom is only giving like cosmetics for like the casuals because like the Teenage Mutant Turtle collab. So you could dress up as a turtle in like the battle hub and like you know fight as a turtle. And like I I like that aspect a lot, you know, uh, because if they don't do that. Bro, the player base is going, dog, because it's really rough. The fact that you can use your avatar from story mode as, like, a fighter, I think is, like, the smartest thing ever. And um, I always say that if they want casuals to, like, stay in the game, they have to make a lot of game modes that are non-fighting games in the game mode. Mm -hmm. Tekken 6 did it perfectly, but they screwed up. What'd they do? So there was, like, a, there was like, the story mode was a, uh, was a two-point, it was, like, a 2D. 2D like side scroller beat them up mm -hmm. with oh, Tekken sick. characters. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, like you could do Tekken strings and everything, and it was it was co-op. So like people, it used to get like money and things like that, and you could use that money to customize your character and things like that. So they they need to like add stuff and elements like that. That's why Smash is also good because they got like the story mode where you got to fight the Master Hand and you got like the the mini games and stuff like that try to be, like 
there's a lot of things that you can do that is just not fighting. Mm -hmm. And like, as long as you do that, like you add like more elements, like, oh, guild battles and things like that. Like, you know, fall guy, like they added like a fall guys uh, and like this fighting game, things like that. Like adding those things is really good. Ideally, I would love for a fighting game to have to move from technical controls and make it into like simple controls. But the, the, the problem, the problem that I want, uh, the issue that I have is I want to have that same feeling as I will feel when I switch to the new game, game mode. And I just want the companies to like compensate that. And I'm not asking for a lot. I, I would do it. No problem. But I would also like the, the, that feeling of reward, you know, like that, that adrenaline rush that I get, you know, playing against like intense, intense good players when I know like, Oh, this player is good. I have to give him my A game. Uh, everything has to be perfect. You know, I like that excitement. You know, obviously we can't be perfect, but the goal is to try to optimize ourselves to be perfect. But that right. excitement is fun for me. And I just want to like, I want to relive that if we're going to go to like the new generation of fighting games. That's all I ask. That's it. I feel like that's really reasonable, honestly. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I like how you're thinking about like, how the game can thrive, you know, not just with diehards or people who who are really try hard about it, you know, because yeah, like how else is like the player base going to refresh if they're not like allowing like new people to jump in and then work their way up into getting good, right? Facts, yeah. Adding more let's, ranks is helpful too. Let's, like, let's talk about that one. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, no you go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, I was gonna take it somewhere else. You can go. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's do it. I was about to say, let, let, let's talk about the, the real elephant in the room, bro. You mentioned this earlier, dog. <laughs> the Ninja Turtles, bro. They in everything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you they even have the their turtle? own game? <laughs> what <Bro>. is this? <laughs> <laughs> Product placement? <laughs> bro, like, the Ninja Turtles, they just they just got added to Fortnite yesterday. Oh, That's really? Crazy. Yeah, they look dope. They look cold as fuck. They were like, in Injustice 2. Oh yeah, they were in. Yep. That was. Oh sick. yeah, I was shocked about that too. I was like, yeah. Mortal Kombat, like type of deal. Like that's that's pretty cool. And Justin, Bro, they stay alive. The wildest, like that. Whoever's their marketer, whoever their their like their uh, acquisition person. I don't know who yeah, it is. A partnership person, like this, right? Yeah. Partnership. Yeah. yeah, that guy is on his fucking job. Yeah. <laughs> he is in every single game. He's in Nicktoons fighting. He's in uh, Fortnite now. He's in like yeah. He was in Injustice. He had the movie come out. The movie, like, yeah. The movie, bro, yeah. they, I see that series won't die. Go ahead, bro. I, I was gonna say, like, you know, one thing that marketing know is that, like, they will always get us by bringing back something that we grew up with. I'm happy like, about that. Yeah, I'm really like, happy about like, that. Like, they're, like, 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 we're the target. Yeah, we got money. Yeah, and then we're we're the we're the marketers because we're gonna tell everybody why this is so great. So yeah. it does the job for them. So we are actually. The market, the marketer, the marketers, right? So, like, let's say, for example, like Marvel just dropped like an X Men game, like an actual like X Men, like all of the X Men, right? Mm, right. Or like a movie of like the X Men. We're gonna get excited, yeah. right? Because we know how long it's been since we had an X Men. You know, you know what's crazy about that? You're right. Uh, it's like it's cool because the '90s, like in the '90s specifically, late '80s even, but more of the '90s. There were so many cartoons and like nostalgia factors at that time that we are the nostalgia like direction whenever companies are looking for stuff. They're looking yeah. at '90s kids. Oh, yeah, ain't no one making like Astro yeah. Boy had a, a series come out recently and it did okay. Pluto, Pluto, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Pluto, it did okay. Look, it wasn't yeah. bad. But you know what's crazy? Okay. They did randomly live action Yu Yu Hakusho. That mess was hype. I was like, bro, yeah. who? Who who was even asking for it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Right, but they did it, and like the first episode was pretty damn good. I was like, wow, this is pretty good. I'm glad to hear that because I've been hearing some mixed reviews, mostly hype. So I need to start that. Like it just came out. Like I, yeah. I'm happy that like uh, these live actions are actually starting to get good again. Yeah, you know, like for example, like look at One Piece for example. One Piece. If you see how One Piece started now and what it is today, yeah, right. Yeah, like if like if they now it's now it has both of the nostalgic people, but it also has the people that are still diehard getting into anime right now, and that's one of their things, right? Yeah. So yep. If they drop something that is like One Piece, bro. Everybody's going to go apeshit, which is why the One Piece live action did so well because it got 
all everybody on board. So we market it. So if they go for like the nostalgic games, like uh, or nostalgic series, like bro, if they literally come out with like you know, um, like Thundercats, uh-huh. you know, people are going to lose it for Thundercats, right? But like, although I feel like that's like the older like Gen X. I feel like Gen X doesn't go out like as hard for theirs. Their it's gonna brand. be the eighties and yeah, it's gonna be eighties. Yeah. Thundercats is definitely eighties. He Man, Thundercats, uh, all that stuff. Like yeah, that, that, that is a market. Out. That is a market. It is like a market right for the sweet spot. Yeah, but you know, yeah, remember. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. People will people will like give it a chance. Yeah, they like, yeah, absolutely. I've heard of Thundercats. Yeah, and I heard it's so good. So let me give it a try. It happened with Voltron. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, so, Voltron was the eighty shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I just feel like that's the kind of marketing that they're getting, which I like. You know, that's why they, you know, that's why they kind of like stick with the old uh, same IP mm-hmm. and just revamp it. Yeah, because it's safe. Yeah, you know these remakes. Which I also like, like yeah. I, I oh, like yeah, I remakes, saying. but also, yeah, I am bummed. Like, I am like, what is like the new stuff that they're gonna come out with? But I, uh, you know, because also, I also rail against the kids all the time, like these damn kids. But also, it's not their fault. I feel I wish that the like I'm happy for like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like coming back out. It's something that sort of ties new generations with old generations, you know. Um, and I always, I always like am sad like the kids don't get like real cartoons, you know, sort of like Looney Tunes or like Flintstones in a way, you know. Like sort of like the old stuff, so that way they can at least know their history, so way they can hopefully like make stuff that's new, but you know at least know about the past. You can make a good future, right? Versus right, like, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. That's why right. I, I, I thought that was funny. He said they didn't know about the, the the old cartoons, and he named the two cartoons I didn't give a fuck about. You didn't care <laughs> about Flintstones. you didn't care about Looney Tunes or Flintstones. I hated the Flintstones. Right? That's crazy. I love the Flintstones. I love the Flintstones. I don't know, yes. about the Flintstones. Wait, I wanted to end all the time. Oh, I was like, Nick at night. Oh, it's, uh, no. Not, not none of that? Nothing from that? No, nah, I think I think uh, Tiny Toons, when that came out in the 90s, I liked Tiny Toons way more than Looney Toons. I liked it. Looney Tiny Toons was really good. Tiny Toons was good. Tiny Toons was baby, really good. Baby Looney Toons was really good. I didn't I didn't like Baby Looney Toons, but I needed to check that one out. I was like, yeah. I, I, I thought that yeah, would be like yeah, true. <laughs> you know, yeah, you are thirty now. You don't have to check out Baby Looney Tunes. But look, let me let me tell you this though: if they randomly came back out of nowhere, just randomly, and they were like, "We're making an Ed and Eddie," everybody, everybody losing their shit. At least everyone's gonna give it a chance. Yeah, and yeah. we're and we're all gonna market it. Of yeah. why we why you should watch. Ed yeah, and Eddie. because that's a Gen Z, right? It's like. No, that's a millennial, right? Yeah, millennial. That's, that's, us. Sure. that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's us. a millennial. Yeah, that's a yeah. millennial. So, like, the fact that we get something like that, that that will just do well. Same, same yeah. shit. You know what's still carrying right now from Gen Z? South Park. All right, millennial. Wait, is, is, my, my bad. Millennial South Park. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm glad that's still killing it. Like, yeah. I, I thought that would have died, like, multiple times, you know, either from people trying to cancel it. Or uh-huh. you know, after a while, you just stop making funny jokes because yeah. You say what because you need. A, but the problem is, is that we just give them too much fuel, so it's very <laughs> easy for them to make. A, it was like, like a skeptic about it, you know. I, I feel like we they need were, it still these days, you know, like uh, just sort of like with all this cancel culture, like people are still looking for something that can talk about like what's happening in like a sort of flagrant way too, you know, like mm-hmm. versus everything is sort of coded, you know, everything has to be coded. It's sort of funny for this to be like, this is what people are really going through right now. Right. Yeah. I feel like there's like a market, yeah. like people like sort of like we sort of started killing off, like sort of saying like what we really mean in a way in sort of media. That's, that's what I'm thinking. You know, like we're, we're getting mad at comedians, you know, Matt Reif, you know, like uh, that whole controversy that he's going through. Although his thing is like dumb. <laughs> but, but you know, we're people, getting mad at comedians, you know, for like saying yeah. things in a certain way, right? Yep. Welcome to the pandemic. That's crazy. Yeah, I must say, like, I remember watching a YouTube video on this where they were talking about how, like, our gen, that gen millennials in the '90s, we had the big boon of cartoons, where like cable companies started focusing on making a bunch of cartoons for kids, right? X Men, uh, X Men, uh, the animated series, Batman, the animated series, and those are the big, the big ones. And then you had Spider Man, the animated the series. series. Like they just kept pushing things on us, and they were like, "Yo, y'all like more cartoons?" Sonic the Hedgehog came out. Uh, more anamorphic characters. Yo, make Crash Bandicoot. Hey, yo, make fucking Ninja Turtles. Yo, hey, 
Like, it was just like nonstop pushing and pushing. But we got to get these kids on board. Um, Street Sharks, if anyone remembers that stuff, like all this stuff. And now we are now the people who have we, we are now the age group where we have money. So why would they not cash in on us now? Right? Like it yeah. just makes sense. Yep. But in the eighties and stuff, they were like, they were forcing those kids to watch MASH and shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you remember that? Oh my oh, god, man. bro. I, 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 didn't I didn't watch it. Yeah, shows, bro. Yeah, MASH with all the <laughs> dots and shit. I was like, bro, what is what am I watching? I didn't watch that. I skipped that. I'm glad to be like a nineties kid because it seemed like it was sort of boring in the eighties. Also, like just wasn't as accepted, you know, whereas with the nineties, like what we got to grow up with, like felt a lot more acceptable. Um, you know, like where now everyone's coming out like that. They secretly all watched it and then, oh, everyone now loves it. You know, <laughs> we were all yeah. over nerds back in the day. Right. Yeah. I think the only thing out of the, like the oldies that I really like watching was like the old Western movies. I thought those movies were really interesting to watch. I want to get into those now. I didn't watch any of those as a kid, but like now that I'm an older, you know, cinephile, I think I want to give him more of a chance. Josh, you don't yeah, look you like you don't, you don't like Western movies. Nah, you and my grandma would have got along great. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my dad, bro, be on, know. my dad would be on a Western movie, bro. I had to watch See, that's all taste of right there, you know. Yeah. Oh my god, nah, kids, like she, nah, I would get in trouble for doing some stupid, stupid shit at the house. My grandma would make me sit in the corner of her room. In like that that seated position. Oh, no chair. oh my god! Just like, yeah, sit there. I'd be watching westerns. I mean, this shit is ass. <laughs> I'd be so oh, mad. Oh no! See, that's why you hate it. Is because you had to watch yeah, you it. Had punishment. Yeah. yeah, that was a, that was a punishment. You know, that sucks. That's hilarious, <laughs> oh, yeah. though. But yeah, you know, to get back on the to to jump on that other ship. Yeah, social media has been like a, a big thing where like you know um, comedians. It's hard to like. To have a job now as a comedian, um, I feel like I feel like now comedians just have to be so like buttoned um, up. Yeah, or like they have to just carry like like if you're a woman comedian, I feel like you, the best joke you could do is be like, "Yo, guys suck," and like people are going to agree with it. Yeah, and, like use that as like a joke. Yeah, you see these guys, look how stupid they are. Ha 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 ha! Everybody's laughing, right? You can't if you don't laugh, then obviously you look. You, yeah, you know. So it it kind of it kind of just sucks that everything has to be like a like the things that they talk about has to be very 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 obvious that like if we talk about it you're okay with it like, yeah we all like, agree like we all agree I agrees right now with this yeah and like I think that's corny Me you know too. like it's a cheat code you know yeah uh, it's like it's like like for example it's like me saying like yo man like um, I support women's right, right, right. Oh my God! You see how you see how like helpful I am towards women because I I yelled out that I support you guys. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, in my opinion, I'll be like, back in the day, like motherfucker, like dudes hired women as managers because they knew that they was going to get the job done. So like, where what, what do you mean? Like, there's no like, you know, women's right. Like, obviously there is like. We people, there are dudes that look down on women, and like there are people yeah, that try absolutely. to. Look at that. We are, we all know that's a real thing. Mm. But like, as an average person, well, that's the problem right there, though. Not everyone knows that shit. It's like it's like one of those comments where you're like, we all know people are racist, right? But then someone's like, no, they're not. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, there's the, you've met those people. Yeah, that's, that's why the, the the minority group gets upset because like we feel like you're they they don't know you and they feel like you might be siding with those other people. Yeah, bro, that shit is corny. Like. You know, I grew up with nothing but like uh, sisters and mothers. Like my my dad passed away when he was tw- when I was twelve years old. You know, rest his soul and things like that. So you know, I was like really around with like a bunch of uh, a bunch of girls. I had like two sisters. I had a third sister that was like you know a bit older, but I had like two sisters and a mother. And like you know, like I I was a middle child. So you know, I grew around and like obviously like you know I, I care about all of them. I love them to death. And like you know, uh, I never once like belittled them. If anything, like my older sister taught me a lot of things, and like you know, I I I go to her about like certain like advice, certain things. She ta- she 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 was really street smart in a lot of ways. So like hearing her and like talk to her, like I I got a lot of information out of that. So you know, but a lot of people don't tell people about that because it's not you know we grew up that like you don't tell nobody your business and what you learn and how you know and what you, you know you tell people how you move. You know what I mean? So like that's why people don't know that like. 
it's it was not an issue until now. You know what I mean? And like, uh, I feel like it's just a lot of people that just lost a lot of social skills that actually belittle the women the most mm-hmm. than the people that actually have like the most social skills. Obviously, we all we all got the hoodlums in the group, but like you know, we don't talk about that. But that majority of people, you know, we we look out for each other and like you know, we we support one another. We know what's good. Uh, we don't know about all this extra bush that people are talking about, but it's a narrative that people can like use and like farm and market and make money off of it. Yeah, that's perfect. Actually, I was like, I like that you push it to that narrative spot. So you've heard of red pill spaces, right? You know what I, that is. I, both I, I don't know what that is actually. That's crazy. Okay, and Goswell, you've heard, heard of that possibly? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So red pill spaces. It's like this. I, it's so, and this is the, this is the issue. Because the internet is so vast now, because when we were kids, it wasn't there. Whatever we saw in the news is kind of like what we all thought. If someone said, hey, we just, you know, we bombed Iraq, but they had oil, we just believed them because that's the only news source. We had three different news channels. Exactly. Huh? That's all we have. Fox 11, uh, Channel yeah. 13, and ABC. And, and NBC. I'm not going to say that's, that's better. I think having more information is cool. But because there's more information, it means that more people are getting information from random places, which isn't, again... Could be a good or a bad thing. Just depends. I feel like it's not a lot of so media literacy. You know, people can't t- like look at a source of information and know like where this information came from and how trustworthy it is. You know, people yeah. don't read the whole article. <laughs> yeah, just it's read the headlines. Yeah, they they read yeah. the clickbait. Dude jumped off the building. Oh wow, he committed suicide. And then you and that, read the article, bizarre. somebody pushed them. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that becomes our issue because, like, with the woman thing specifically, and this is going to go into to black people stuff, it's going to go into all sorts of different Oh, yeah, areas, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's exactly what's going to go. The red pill shit, the red pill is like this idea. Okay, so it starts off as an idea of uh, men, generally a lot of, okay, you know this, most kids this generation don't have fathers, right? Or don't, they come from Facts. single parent households. That's realistically what happens. Yep. From single parent households. Um, so as young boys do, they look for something to resemble a uh uh older figure. Mm-hmm. So whether that's finding a friend that you think is your older brother, or you you treat them as such, not that you think that is, but you know, or finding um a role model of some sorts through music, through you know, like oh Tyler Perry's my favorite artist now, and you know, I I, I try to live like that, da-da-da, or ASAP Rock, whoever it might be. You're learning shit from TV, internet, whatever. Recently, we had a big thing with Andrew Tate, right? I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I'm okay. a, I, so you know I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, they they had him. They labeled him as like the Godfather of the Red Pill. <laughs> they oh, put him funny. at the top. Oh, so he's he, he, so he's peak, he's peak red Red Pill. He was he's what they put. They, they, okay. they nominated him. Okay. He didn't really care that much, but he kind of like he was cool with it for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Um, until it became lame, and then he was like, "Nah, I didn't fuck with that." But anyway, it was like essentially. Red Pill movement was about male improvement. So a bunch of guys really jumped on board with this shit. And it started off as male improvement in the sense of like, go hit the gym, you know, to make you feel better. Go go get go get money because you get bitches. <laughs> you know, if you want eight girls, you, you can get it and make it happen, but you gotta be a high value man. They use all these buzzwords and shit. They would say all these things and how tell you what to do and you know how to do it. Um, but what it really ended up turning into is because it would start there and it always turned into this thing of how stupid women were compared to men. Or how yeah. easy they were to manipulate compared to men. And this movement became quite large. Like, and that's why it's like whenever you, when Matt Rife makes a joke, again, because the women hear this shit and they know about the red pill. And because like you didn't know about it all because you were in a different area of the internet. It's like the modern controls thing. It's like the moment they see, they hear like the red pill, you already have that, like that, that animosity. Mm. Yo, oh, exactly. so you think I'm stupid? Mm. You know, right, right off the bat. It's from, yeah, it's coming from a bad place. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus, like, trying to understand the other side, right? Yeah. Which makes sick. sense, though, right? As black people, we would do the same shit. If some white dude got on stage, or some some white, like, it was like, we're just in a crowd. we just sitting there. Or like, maybe, like, a couple of the black people there. And some white dude got on stage, and it's mostly white people in the crowd. He's just like, yeah, man, you know, like, da 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 He said something. He's talking talks about how, like, you know, well, you know, black people do be committing all them crimes. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you really believe that, because you're not finishing the joke or nothing. Yeah, like you just left that in the ether, and I was yeah. like, I'm sitting here like, 
Huh? Hold up, what? Like, yeah. that's how women end up feeling about these type of things, right? That's fair. Because, like, Matt Wright, that joke wasn't funny, to be honest. I'm yeah, like, I, I like Matt Wright. I hoped he was going to do well. I went and looked up the joke to see if that people were just hating. Yeah. And that joke wasn't, it didn't land. And, you know, with comedy, if you're going to make a joke that's edgy, it's got to be funny. You yeah. can't just make, they can't land that flat. That whole was not a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> so I wish that was the conversation. Cool. I wish we talked about the conversation about, like, the joke's not funny versus, like, now nah, he's a misogynist or whatever, you know? That's what I'm saying, though. Everyone's on edge Buzz because words. everyone's on their Buzz own words. pockets of the internet. Yeah. And in their pockets of the internet, they got echo chambers of people, whether it's, you know, white people hate black people or cops are out to get you or, uh, you know, men hate women now or whatever yeah. it is. Everyone's got things in their ear nonstop, right? So when you hear these things, those specific groups, whether it's trans people getting mad at Dave Chappelle, they're going to get angry because they're like, I don't know who you are. Why are you making jokes like that? Yeah, how are you speaking for me? What it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And- yeah, how you speaking for me? And it's like, you know, the same thing for like, you know, like uh, this might this might be a hot take as well. But like, you know, I feel like the Black Lives Matter movement lost its identity as well. Yeah, it got hijacked. Well, it, yep. got, it got hijacked by a bunch of, you know, a bunch of folks that buzzed the word. You yep. know, mm-hmm. and now now we found out that the, all yeah. that money that we were investing, uh, uh, you know, somebody bought some, some cars and shit. Yeah, you know, was, <laughs> hey, 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 you know, who, who, who's this we were investing, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so you know it bothers me too because like you know i i always like i this like i understand people want to be respectful about me and i appreciate those people but i also want you to be comfortable with me as well and i also want you to like shoot the jokes like i'm shooting too like you know what i mean like i have a i have a homie um i, I had a friend like that ass she like i told her uh you know she always be like um she was like, yeah, like, you know, um, I know my, my brother, you know, he, he grew up like in New York and like in New York, everybody says the N-word. So naturally when you grow up in that environment, you yeah. say the N-word. Right? The, uh, so, and, but everybody in New saying. York, everybody in New York is like, cool with it. It's crazy, right? It's like different world, different world, right? And some people, it might not be the same. So, but when you're born and raised into that, you have to break that out of somebody. And the way you break through that out is like making mistakes. So when you make the mistake, how are you going to like, you know, how they're going to, how are you going to learn from it? What what I want most is like ability for redemption for people, you know, it's like people are being assholes. Okay. For sure. You know, like let's (sighs) treat that versus differently versus like, Hey, I made a mistake. I'm really trying to learn. Right. Like I'm really trying to do better versus everyone's just an enemy. You, you messed up. Always an enemy. Look, man, if I can forgive the father, uh, if I can forgive the person that killed my father, I can forgive somebody saying nigga for in, in like in the environment, right? Like mm-hmm. they were in that, in that community. I wouldn't even call it the hood. They were in that community. Uh, yeah, that, that was the hood yeah sure. you know what I mean? That was pretty much in that. And, uh, you know, I even like, I had a huge conversation with like my friend cause she, I told her straight up, I was like, yo, like it's so like, sometimes people think of it, but they don't mean it in like in a negative way. They laugh at it. Like sometimes adding that spice is like more funny. I was like, why is it wrong with, for them to like laugh and like, you know, just yeah. ask questions and shit? And I was like, you listen to a song and they and you're like saying the lyrics, like, are you like gonna like, oh, I'm punishing myself because in this lyric it said the n word. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. dog, like, let that like drop drop it a little bit, man. Like, it's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we good, we human, we we chilling, we vibing. Like, go touch some grass. You know what I mean? Like, do whatever you gotta do. To like loosen up, but like I'm not your enemy, and like, like do you? But like, don't try to take what I'm doing. Yeah, or like, yep. and obviously some it. people learn differently, so like let them learn differently. You know, yeah. I mean? Like for me, like I, I agree with you. Honestly, it's like, I, like I get because like I definitely understand the historical connotation for it. You know, but I do too. Yeah, you know, like yeah, definitely. Like we all do, right? <laughs> like yeah. everyone that's here right now definitely gets it. Uh, and I'm like, am I just supposed to? Uh, you said the N-word, I'm supposed to tear my shirt off and yeah, you know, I, start punching immediately, right? I literally tell the jeans again, they going off. <laughs> I, I literally, somebody 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 said it and like obviously he was around people that said it and things like that. And I told I bumped him and I was like, hey man, like there are some people that are like that has my skin tone that might not like what you say. Yes. So I'm saying, like, if you're gonna say it, understand say it amongst where you the are. Yeah, understand yeah. where you are and say it amongst the people that are like Chill with it. Chill with it, or and like letting you say it, right? Yeah. But they don't. That don't give you the accessibility to say it to everybody else, right? Yes. 
Uh, I like and like, it. No. And I and I said I I said it that way, and like people being like, "What?" So you saying saying uh, uh, behind the scenes is even better? And I'm like, bro, I can lie to you and say I'm never gonna say the n word ever. And then I can I can literally say it on street, yeah, I would never say the n word ever again in my life. I'm taking it off. Please believe me. Nigga, 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 bro. Like you, <laughs> you, you're not gonna know, right? Yeah. So like, uh-huh. you might as well just be like, you might as well just let them be honest to you. Yeah. Rather than just giving them the choice to lie to you. Yeah. Like just give them yeah. the choice to be honest. And sometimes you just let them know, like, just don't say it around me. Yeah. But exactly. This, this, it, you know, like, that's the thing. I think it has to be like, hey, I feel this way. Can you please not say it around me? And then just let it be. Versus like. You should know better. Yeah, like how could you say? You know, is this or even, you know, like with like uh like trans. Like I'm sorry, but like you know, maybe I'm getting into dangerous territory. But but you know, it's like I, I sort of wish that. Really, I'm like, sorry. I'm nervous. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> talk to you. we disavow what God wants to say. <laughs> we, <laughs> but for me, it's like I, I I get annoyed like when people get mad of like not knowing pronouns, and I'm like. And like when people are like, uh, like I see like online, it's like you need to do your own research. And I'm like, this is no, the time to do research. You're telling you're, you're a- telling people you're telling people to go on the internet and look you up. You you know how creepy that sounds. Yeah, that sounds way yeah. worse, honestly. Yeah, like that sounds way worse. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like or like you know, I'll see like black people getting mad at white people online when like I'll see like them asking like genuine questions. You know, enough like don't mess with trolls, people who don't want to understand. But yeah. I'm thinking that, like, all right, someone's asking, like, questions about, like, what happened. And then you tell them to go look it up. I'm like, that just, it makes me mad. It makes me disappointed. Yeah. Like, versus, like, a chance to, like, actually, like, teach someone with patience and hopefully that they become an ally. Now we're just like, I'm not going to help you. You should already know. You, If you don't know, then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I, It's just thinking, I, like, I, it hurts everything. I think, I think with that, the way the world is trying to, like, go to that direction is never going to help because there are already people that are already stuck in their ways. It's like, you know, I don't like, I don't care what you tell me. I look at you as this and you have to live with those people being around. Yeah. Like yep. as we lived around with people who were black that got looked down upon back in the day, they got hung yeah. because of your skin color. Like it's, it's a, it's the same thing, just different timeline. Right. Yeah. And like, uh, I think the biggest thing that, uh, that bothers me the most too is that like there are some people that um you know like i give you like an interesting example so uh obviously there are some people that look mad tall buff as fuck you know from a distance you would think that's a that's a buff ass dude yeah right because naturally we grew up that's what we that's what we know you're telling somebody that has known somebody that recognized what we what we see, perceive as a dude for 20 plus years. And you're telling them, like, no, you can't make that assumption. And I'm like, we've been making that assumption for for centuries, centuries, millennium, like, yeah, yeah. millenniums. Like, now we got to change up the whole mindset so it can be like and like but not give any grace for like any of the transition. For, yeah, right? like you don't, you don't give me a chance to like. You don't walk up to me and be like, hey, I just want you to know, like, this is what I go by. Mm. So, like, if you can, like, can you call me this? Yes. I will really appreciate that. Yes. I, I think that's way better than getting mad at me for not guessing. Yes. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. You know? yeah, like, I, think, I think reasonably, I want, I, want, I, want, I want to make sure the blame's on the right people. I feel like reasonably most trans people, when it comes to that, their own identification, yeah. they seem to be all about that. Like, oh, yeah, no, nah, I just go by whatever. And yeah. they sometimes don't even bring it up. It's usually their friends. Mm. That yeah. Yeah. It's the same like, thing for defensive a, for other people. Yeah, like yeah. we definitely have gotten through that, that's right? The same thing for the BLM, that's the same thing for the BLM movement. Like a person that's non-black will be like mad, trying to shoot everybody racist. I'm like, bro, like no, wow, we're not angry. Like, like chill. Chill. Yeah, right? It's more about the allies who 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 like uh take take on the uh you know the guilt the armor. rather than like the fucking you. armor yeah yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. put on all their black plate and they go out there and yeah they start wakanda fighting. fucking black <laughs> the wakanda yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. all that bro it's, it's yeah it's, like, like, that's, that's something for trans people i feel like trans people are generally pretty cool about that type of stuff like yeah. they get it yeah. they're like yeah i know i'm going through a transition you know it's a little yeah. you know, whatever do one of my I haven't, close- had a, I haven't had a lot of experience with trans people specifically just being like actually i'm a i'm a whatever whatever yeah. it's like they, they're pretty cool about it yeah uh, dude like they gave me their name 
And like they'd be like, yo, you know, this I'm you know, I'm a trans person, like this, you know that. I was like, okay, what do you identify as? And they'd be like, I identify as this. I'm like, all right, cool. And then like that's it. We shoot the shit, we dope. Shit, they're edgy as fuck too. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I guess I can kind of like talk too. You know what I mean? We shooting the shit, everything's vibe, right? One of my good friends, like one of my close friends, trans, we 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 talk about shit like this all the time. Because um, one of the things that they said to me, and they was like, yo, you know, once I like once they approved gay marriage. I was happy. Yeah. There's nothing for me to like, I don't need nothing, nothing to fight for. I just wanted to have that opportunity to marry my partner and be happy. And we approved that. And it was a big celebration. So I don't understand what happened to like all like this looking down and like being suppressed. You know, personally, uh, and I've been I've been seeing a lot on the internet, particular only on the internet. I'm not gonna say more in a person because I know in person it's different, but I would say on the internet, I feel like most people that are like really trying to like find ways to be to to feel like a minority are people that literally are like Caucasian, bro. And I'm just gonna throw it out there. And I think that they're trying to feel that minority sense. And I get it because it does suck. But this is shit that people have been dealing with for a very long time. Yeah, very long time. And it's okay. You know what I mean? Like it's all right that people are not going to accept who you are. People got your back. People who care about you got your back. People who are straight, you know, straight, bi, we all got your back. Like, you know, it's it's cool. You're going to run into those, bro. Like, if somebody, if I'm if I'm in Florida and somebody called me the hard R, like, I'm not hurt, bro. I'm like, oh, yeah. he in the car. He bet, he lucky he in the car. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. he lucky in the car. But, like, you know, the I, I, I think, Asking for sympathy and reaching for validation is the most unhealthiest thing ever. And like, they should just stop. They're not going to stop because that's the easiest way to get views and things like that. Yeah. And like, it's come, it might come, it might sound like, it might be sounding bad with what I'm saying. But if you really pay attention to what I'm saying, it's like most, like, like my, my black trans friends, like, they talk about how racism in the trans community, nobody talks about that. But everybody want to talk about how trans people are being suppressed by all these other people. But they suppress themselves as well. There's a lot of, like, dirt. So, like, I I can't, like, feel bad that, like, you're also going through what we all going through. You know? Like, welcome to the club. This is how you go through it. You know? You, yep. you, you, you focus on your mental. And you you, you, you you push out the trolls. Let them, let them be trolls, bro. They're the weird ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? The people hating, it's always, it's always, it's sad though. It, it gets me. I remember I was at my, I was literally at my barber last week. Uh, I mean, no one knows who he is. He's anonymous, but it's like, he was like sitting there. We, we just be talking about random stuff. He's known me since I was like, I'm pretty young, like 16 at this point. So he was like, bro, Josh, man, he's sitting me down in the chair. He's like, cause you know, everyone else left the barber shop. It was just me and him. He's like, but then he's like, yo, he's like, they chop, cause we we're watching the news. He's like, they chopping off these kids' nuts, bro. I was like, okay, I don't think they chopping off these kids' nuts, bro. I don't know how yeah, that's like, exactly that how it extremes. works. Like, yeah, but he's just he's just saying stuff. He's just like, yo, man, like he's like they they do this. And he's like, that's why I can't vote for him. And he starts making all these jumps <laughs> to conclusions. Yeah, like I'm like, bro. And I looked at I looked up right in front of him. I looked up on my phone. I was like, listen, like look. I think a statistic. What was it? it was about 3,500 kids transition a year. 3,500 kids transition. 3,000. Like actually, uh. Yeah, you said thirty five hundred, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Yes, yeah, I was yes, like, yes, yes. yeah, cool, cool. Just yeah, thirty five hundred. Now he was like, "That's a lot of kids." Imagine, da, 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 da. I was like, "Bro," and I looked it up right after that, and I had to bring it up just to make sure. Seventy four point two million kids, uh, in America. Yeah, yeah. So 3, you... out of seventy four million, right? Yeah, that's how many kids are in America. You're talking about thirty five hundred a year. Seventy four two thirty four point two million. Or in America, and that's growing every year. It's a, it's a fraction of a fraction you're talking about of kids who are going through this transition, and like the transition doesn't. And I had to expe- specify this too. To, the transition. I'm all wrap this up, but the transition doesn't mean that they're chopping off your balls. It means you're probably going through uh, hormonal changes, right? Like you're going through puberty blockers. That's realistically what's happening. Like the doctor's gonna look at you and be like, "Oh, we'll put you on some. We'll see how you feel, right?" And then after about a year, if you feel good about the puberty blockers, then we'll get you on like. You know, when you get 18, 17, we can go and do the bottom surgery or whatever. But it's that no five-year-old kid coming in and knocking his kid's balls off and being like, 
but the way the way that these like it. these news sources, everything's are pushing things on us, yeah. it's getting real strange. And this, and I understand why they're so paranoid. That's what I'm, I was trying to get to. I understand why they're paranoid because like people like this do exist, and people do look at them like they're the weirdest fuck for yeah. no real reason outside yeah. of they feel something else about themselves. Yeah, personally, I feel so, like the weirdest people are the people that are not accepting to like the new style that a lot of people are living. You know, like. Yeah. I'm 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 happy that everybody can be happy. Yeah, that's you know? what I want. I, I just want yeah. people to be able to live their lives to the best of their own ability. As long as they're not impacting my life in a negative way, yeah. that's wrong, right? And at the same time, I'm, yeah. and I'm also a strong believer of like, I I think people shouldn't bring kids into like these things. I think these are things that you should find out after you turn 21. I wouldn't even say 18. I feel like 18. Oh, okay. I feel you. Yeah. I, I feel like 21 is like the official, like, you're in adulthood. 18 is like the gimmick. It's like, you think you're an adult. So I'll push you on this. And only because you don't have to answer this. I know you, you got a whole conglomerate of organizations working behind you. <laughs> but it's like, how do you feel about this? And if, again, if you want to answer, we can cut, we can whatever. But so the thing about the 21 year old, because I agree, I understand where you're coming from. You have more facilities of your own mind at the age of 25, 21, even, right? Um, but like you said earlier, we're like, if you're, if you look like a man, you're going to look like a man for a while, especially if I started transitioning, we'll start, I started transitioning when I was 25, God's a new me. I was already kind of big. So I started trying to turn into a girl at that point. You're going to know I was a man at one point. Right. Yeah. But if I started doing that when I was 12, before, before puberty really hit me before, like it's quite literally the, the Pokemon evolution. That's what, what that puberty is. Right. Cocktail right. it drops in you and your body starts changing. Shoulders get broad. Your legs get longer. Everything starts changing. If you hit me with that puberty blocker at that point, for I'm getting more women uh, estrogen and things like that rather than testosterone, wow. I would actually look like a woman by the time I'm 21. Right. Which means I can live the life the way I want to live, like as a woman. Right. So that's why they would do those things. Do you? How do you feel about that? So the thing is about that is like at that time, it's like how would you know like what you're going through? You know what? Who is telling you this? You know like. Like, is it like a therapy? Like, is it like a thing that you like are seeing? Like, is it something that you're attracted with? You know, things like that. It's like, it's very hard for me to like tell somebody, yo, take this medication to a kid, take this medication. And like, this is going to like transition you to be what you want to be. Because as you get older, you might find yourself a little bit more. It takes a lot for people to like mature, you know, man, anyone, it takes a long for us to mature. Like, you know, for example, I was like, yo, uh, like, you know, as a kid, I was like, yo, man, like, I, I, I'm I, not attracted to tall girls, right? Mentally, right? I see a tall right. girl, I think of it as like, whatever, at whatever my head's thinking. But as you grow up, you're like, yo, tall girls are kind of fine. Hold up. You know what I mean? Time out. You know, blah, 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 blah. And let's just, for, let's just say, for example, like, I, I want to do this when I grow up, right? And you work towards being it and being like, oh, maybe I'm not going to do it. So, when you make a huge choice in your life that literally changes your body, mm -hmm. I don't think as a kid you should be able to make that choice. And I think, like, I honestly think you should wait until you turn 21. Personally. Because, like, I, guess I, I want to push back on that, too. Because, like, I, I see where you come from. I don't think you're, you know, incorrect in many ways. But also, genuine too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that, like, you know, like, along with the parents, you know, like if it was a kid, just like I want to do this, and they do it by themselves. Okay, watch out. But I'm thinking like with like their guardians, you know, their parents, and like hopefully they know like okay, this kid, you know, really wants to be like this. Because also like one, it's like too foreign culture. I'm really hoping also two is like it's like a more internal decision versus just like oh that looks cool that all these dudes are, or like all these people are doing this. I want to do that too. If it was like a fa a fad, then yeah, let's not. Uh, and I, I do agree with you. It's like, um, you know, like, yeah, like, I think like you are still learning like heavily, like, you know, who you are as you go, as you grow up. But I, I do agree, I more agree with Josh, like, where it's like, all right, like, if you really know, like, who you are, you know, it's like, or at least that's what I'm hoping, you know. Uh, yeah, but how, how how would a 60 year old know what they know if they only here's know the, here's the difference? Go ahead. Not six, not six. Yeah. I would say six. That's, that's way before puberty. I would give you that 12, 13, because you want to get on that puberty blocker early if that's if you know. Mm -hmm. But at 12, I remember at 12, I was watching some of my favorite anime. I felt like I was a person. I was a fully formed person. You know, I was still getting in trouble with my grandma and shit. <laughs> I was a person. And I remember uh, 
like, at that point, I still liked girls in the playground. And I knew I was a boy. Like, I knew I identified with Inuyasha. I in- identified with, you know, like, I watched Goku. Metabots. Yeah. yeah, like, Goku was cool to me. That dude, I want to fight people. I want to, whatever. Like, me and my kids, we watch a Monster Rancher when we get back home. <laughs> like, I remember being a kid and, and identifying as a boy. Now, my sexuality, like, has been consistent to it. I've been attracted to women. But like you were saying earlier, like, I've been attracted to Hispanic girls and I got into to, to black women. And then I got into like, oh, well, tall girls, whatever it might be. That changes. But who I was has always been, I've known I was a boy. I never felt like I was not that. I feel like it would have been different if I was like at the playground and all the guys were playing sports or talking and whatever. And I was just hanging out with the girls all the time and just being like, no, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I really but- I really did like, Laura, uh, you know, Mary Kate Ashley last week. Like, right. it'd be different. If you feel like, I feel like when you identification for yourself, you might know that a little bit earlier. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but 12 it, is, you know. It, it's hard, it's hard, it, it's, it's just hard because like, it, again, like, let's say for example, like, um, uh, let's let's just give a, a, another example. Like, let's say for example, like, oh, um, you know, I feel like this. Well, you only know about your environment and you only know about school. You haven't like right. went out in the world and like experienced things and like things like that. Cause I know there were people that were like gay and they went straight. So it's like, yeah. And I know people who were straight yeah. that went gay. Right? Wait, 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 wait. I, 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 need, I need context on this one. This is crazy. So I'll give you a story. So it was a story. Uh, that I, I was in Watts. There was a family. Uh, it was a family of Hispanic. And uh, he has four kids, four beautiful kids, and been married for 20 something years. And um, he's gay. And the wife knows and everything. And they're still married. And he's gay. Oh, he, so he was, he was gay the whole time. Well, well, I, I didn't, well, I don't, I don't know because he, he had four kids. It, maybe because, he hit the buy side from him. Because there's two, there's two reasons. This is, I don't know whoever else was a part of like God's. I know actually, I don't know why I said whoever else. God's was sitting in the room with me. <laughs> so uh, we both came from religious households. I mean, his, like mine still is. I just don't, I don't you know. Yeah, I'm I, not I came, as, I came, I came out once. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all black. We could just be straight up. Yeah, 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 we were all religious. <laughs> uh, I am. I'm not as much as I was before. No disrespect to any anyone who is though. But I remember, remember one of the big things the Christian. It confused the fuck out of me when I was a child. I would watch these reality shows, especially in the late in the early two thousands. Oh yeah, they would talk about how they they're like, "Yo, conversion therapy is working," and then they would like remember that one the, the meme. I'm not gay no more. Yeah, that dude. I don't like men. I don't like no men, <laughs> bro. I don't, if you I don't watch like the article, I like women. Yeah, <laughs> it, women, it, women, it's women, so, women. It's so it's so false because when I and I say this false because like when I went and looked up stats, and this is always hard for me, especially when I was going through my, you know, trying to align my religion with my beliefs. Most times with conversion therapy they didn't hold like and i say most i mean like almost every single time it never worked yeah. like whenever a, a person's gay like if the person's gay you cannot force them to then like i like women you cannot tell me to be like hey bro but them dudes is looking kind of thick over there but you're not trying to you're not trying to slap them i'm gonna be like no <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like but if it was the standard what happens a lot of times is if it's the standard around you like society is like if everyone was gay in society and I was the pariah, like I was the weird one, I was straight, and I liked women, and everyone's like, bro, what are you doing? Like, for one, I probably wouldn't tell anybody. I probably wouldn't tell anybody for a while, right? I that keep makes myself, sense. like, you know, that makes sense. Like, yeah. Lindsay look kind of thick, but I'm not gonna say that to nobody. Nah, nah, Jared is the one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I, I can see you can see how someone would convince themselves to be like, yo, for my religion or whatever it might be, I'm going to commit to trying to be as you know, whatever is possible. And they would do that thing. And then they would come out eventually and be like, it happened all the time and where there'd be a gay man in a straight relationship and then he would leave his wife or sometimes stick it out, but normally they'd leave their wife, wife way it. late into the relationship. Yeah. And he was like, I was like, you were fuck, you were fucking this woman for 12 plus years? Because he just God fearing. Cultural. Straight up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God fearing. That was it. Yeah. He's like, I was trying to get rid sense. of that shit. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I didn't think about it like that. Like that, like some people could just be doing it out of fear. And like you know, they they do a pretty fucking good job, you know, like hiding that aspect of it. Uh, it's but, sad though, because that means you miss all your life. You're dating, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are happy and things like that, yeah. You know, and I, I guess to get back on like you know, twelve, it, it's just for me, it's just really hard because I don't know if a twelve year old, like when I was twelve, I yeah. didn't know what I, I wanted. Like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't like. know what I wanted to be, right? I didn't know what I wanted to like, like go as. Like 
I never thought I was going to be sitting here with what I am when I was 12. Like 12 year old me would never think this would happen ever. Right. So I just, we just don't know. So it's like, I, 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 it's hard for me to say like, do you actually know who you are? Yeah. You know, you just, you just like girls. You didn't think of a girl boy. Right. Because also I think like things have changed a lot, you know, like for the better and worse, you know, it's like, whereas this would have been a taboo conversation, I think, honestly, 30 years ago, you know, internet, like my, like one of my truths is I started watching porn when I was six years old. And, you know, I mean, I saw the world, I liked girls, you know, way early on, you know, like I, I, knew, I, know I was talking about Satan's will. Shit. I know, right? Porn's will, bro. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> 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 Time to change the name, make it official. Um, yeah, you know, but, and like, that was back in the 90s, you know? So, like, it's only gotten worse since then, you know, like TikTok and, the conversation, like, it's not really going back into the bottle, you know, the this genie of, like, talking about sexuality or being aware of it, like, unless, like, you're, like, not on the internet at all, right? Like, everything is just so open, especially in America. Um, yeah. to, you know, like, it's even, like, going on Instagram or any of these social media sites and just opening up the search bar and seeing, like, what pops out and Voila. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you have no mindset of, like, curating your spot, I know a lot of parents still aren't curating, you know, like, what their kids should look at or watch, right? Um, hell, the stuff that we watched, you know, like, we're talking about Toonami, and, like, if our parents knew what was on Toonami, especially, like, late night, wow. you know, like, yeah. I'm glad our parents, like, weren't aware, you know? Yeah. Like, um, but it does make me wonder, like, all right, like, these days, like, how much worse has that gotten? And like, just like what the kids are aware of these days, you know, it's like, they're just so much more, they're so much more aware of so much more for better and worse, I guess. Right. I mean, kids these days are talking about Israel and Palestine, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. For better and worse. You know, and and, and to add on to like, you know, I, I, I also like, I, I'm willing to learn. Yeah. I'm not one of those people that like. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not, I, like, yeah, you're not like hard. Like, also, I think like your opinion isn't unfounded. You know. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 there's like a way, like you know, maybe kids are developed more now, but I just know at my age, I, at twelve, yeah. I was an idiot. Yeah. Oh, so you know, I I couldn't really like think that deep. So yeah. I'm only going by that. But if I mean, if kids are like ten times Jimmy Neutrons now, <laughs> all right, then well, I guess they can make their choice, right? But yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. You know, I, like for. I had to make a lot of, I had to make a, like adjustment, a lot of things too, you know, like growing up in a household, like religious, you know, I, I stepped away from Christianity and I made myself a child of God mm-hmm. because I didn't like the, uh, the contradictions of like, you know, people saying like, you know, gay people are the devil and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Judging, judging, like, even though in the Bible it says like, don't judge, I like what don't you just judge. said. I like what you just said, you know, like rather than Christianity or like being like a part of like a sect, a child of God. I yeah. like that a lot personally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a child of God because I know that like we're I feel like there is a uh higher universe, obviously, that brought us here and like we all have like a vision of like who we who we are to him. Yeah. And like my goal is to like pursue what my goals and desires is while also bringing good into the world, right? And one of the goods is allowing everybody to be happy. And like if a person wants to be trans and, and that's what make them happy, then do it. I support you and I'm and I got your back if I know you, right? But if I don't know you, you might be a racist. Here. Well, you, you you're just an average person to me. That's why I can't be an ally to like a group. I'm only an ally amongst the people that I support because right. I know them. I know their background. I know who they're about. I know that if something goes down, they have my best interest. I know that they have goodwill in like their choices of like choices in life and their walk of life. So that's why I'm always like in my own world when it comes to like all these things, even with the BLM and we all talk about that. I'm like, these mother, I'm like, bro, at this point, some random, like, uh, like some random white dude got, is, is running it. Right. Or some yeah. random Hispanic dude is running that shit. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know because I don't know. I don't know this person. I, I have no idea. All I know is like this movement, but it, once you, once, a, once a movement becomes a, becomes outside of a community, it's not like it, it's identity. It's like gone. Because now everybody has their own definition of what the movement is. Whether it be like 
You have to participate. A nine to five march. Otherwise, you're a part of it. You know, like all these like terms and conditions. I'm like, man, F that, bro. Like, I got my people. I want the people that got me. And like, I support you guys. And like, I'm 100% okay with it. I'm 100% fully. Like, it doesn't weird me out. You know what I mean? It, I just, it doesn't bother me anymore. You know, like, obviously, when I grew up and I started, I was just like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Bro? But mm-hmm. as I like learned and I like, I got friends and then like, I see how happy they are. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker, like, <laughs> living his best life. You know? Yeah. Like, can't hate that, right? You exactly. know what I mean? That's what so, should be. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's why I'm, I changed my, like, my religion in that regard. And, like, you know, I still believe there is, there is a higher power up there. Um, and, you know, just because of my life and trials and tribulations and what I went through and how I learned how to be who I am and even just, like, you know, the, the, the bullshit that I went through, and like how mischievous I am, and who I who I change to a good person is right, yeah, or, or a good man in my ideal. Uh, you know, it, I couldn't. It, it was. It's not just me. You know, it takes a lot. It takes a lot for. Um, it's it's an investment, but it's also like a gradually like progression, and like that progression only can happen with something, and I believe in that something. I like that. I I feel like they man the people you know that guy yeah. way to look at it versus like sex you know like uh like you know like different groups you know that like that are fighting against each other you know like or yeah. it's us versus them yeah, you know, fuck it's, that. it's all of us yeah, yeah, yeah fuck that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i did think it was funny though uh this is like you know whatever but it's like i thought it was hilarious when you said i i we've all heard the term child of god <laughs> but when you said child of god i thought of fortnite of me or not Fortnite. i thought of a uh, fallout and I was like, that sounds like a cult. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I came with my head. I did it now. <laughs> yeah, I did with the atheists were talking about. I'm like, that did sound like, like kind of cult. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. You're not saying it like, you know, you're not a part yeah. of some big well, faction. Yeah. There's a movie or a book. Uh, shit, what's that guy? Like, it is his name, Child of God, too. Uh, da, da, da. Cormac McCarthy. There we go. And then that's about, like, the apocalypse. Um, and then, like, a serial killer. They had a serial killer. I've been wanting to read it for a minute. People have been saying it's real good, and they made mm-hmm. a movie of it. Anyways, yeah, I always think um, apocalypse and serial killers and cults and all that, especially which is sort of sad, but <laughs> it is what it is nah. these days, sort of, right? People get on to me all the time, bro. They get mad at me. They be like, why you always bring things to apocalypse? I'm like, That's going to be a cold-ass time period, bro. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be all right in my eyes. I, I I'm think 50 years college. after the apocalypse happens. Not, not, not when it's... Yeah, not, not, I don't even need the blast right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. First 100 days, we just got to figure out how to, to make this happen, right? Yeah. I, I imagine. I imagine because my ego is large enough. I imagine I survive. We shall survive. And I, I'm looking cool as fuck with a bandana and shit. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you want to join my squad. <laughs> we, out, we out here catching rabbits and shit, eating some food and shit. Oh man, I, yeah, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking people, hey, go on a run. I need. I need more antibiotics in the. In the yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine I'm running shit. In reality, I'm probably dead. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, man, that you know, that's kind of like the walk I do. You know, I, I I like I like that more than anything else. And I had to come to the conclusion with that. You know, like a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, this, this is like what I am. Like, I, I believe that a higher power exists, but I don't believe in what these people are feeding to me. Yes. Because, like, we're not, I'm not dumb. Like, I don't, like, I've read the book. So I know when, like, something doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. You know, right. when, like, you're, like, attacking a character of a human being. Like, yeah. You, you are not, who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, at the end of the day, like, this is a business for you. So who are you to dictate? Like who that person is. Yeah. Like, like we're just listening to a real. pastor say like his take, and it might not even be a take. It's just more like he's saying things like his own opinions with hopefully the word of God, you know, like or, yeah. you know, like. But he's just you know he's putting his own politics into it versus you know like uh, Read, reading what it is. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. love thy love thy neighbor. Well, I don't know about those guys being our neighbors, but these guys are my neighbors. Right? Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, you know? It's just like... Yeah. You don't get to control who your neighbors are. Exactly. And so you I think, love them who they are. I think what bumps me out the most is like now we're seeing people use... I mean, I guess throughout the human history, people have used it like this. But at the same time, especially now, it feels like people are weaponizing messages yep. of love 
yep. against other people. Like where it's like it should be like a universal. It should be easy. It should be something that we all see and feel. And versus versus like these people like, well, not these people, but these people. You know, it, it's just sort of like it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Or these people are going to heaven. These people are going to hell. And it's like, how do you know that? How do you know, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you went to like the altar and fucking hell. You you got sent to heaven and he was like, God was like, yo, what's good, bro? You're Let good. Let this dude know downstairs people, what's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, dog. Come on, bro. I feel you know that. what I mean? A, like, there's a lot of incongruencies when you look at like, when, and I'm like, I'm not trying to bash on the religion. I think the religion is completely, like, I think it's fine for the most part. If you, if you take it in stride like you're taking it right now, uh, you understand like, I think the core message is the most important part of this, but it's like, th- that's the thing. It's like, when you're talking about like, love that neighbor, all these things, then you go straight back to like, but you know, this guy right here, <laughs> steeped in sin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sex, you know what I mean? But I'm like, bro, you like, you do the same thing. Like it, I think it says we're all born into sin. Does it not? Yeah. So if we're all born into sin and this man is born gay, isn't that just more reason to just fucking accept it? Yeah, and exactly. like, you don't judge this man and let him yeah, live his life. Yeah, you keep lying to your wife the way you do. Yeah, <laughs> whatever the hell you're doing. Yeah, like I'm, dude. Like, bro, like let him live. Let him be. Let him be, bro. Like, leave him the fuck alone. Like, why is it so weird that like this person just happens to like dudes and he's a dude? I know, weird. especially it doesn't do like, anything with your your life or yeah. you know, who you are. Like, it's yeah. like, oh, they're gay, so I'd be gay. You know, like yeah. Like even even when um I mean even like like obviously like people people be like oh like I don't want my kids to see it I'm like well when I was young you didn't even show me kiss, like my mom never like kissed my dad in front of in front of me so like what's the difference now like like you know like parents out here like smooching like mad good in front of each other like in front of kids nobody did that yeah so like yeah. that's bullshit no yeah. no no kids were seeing any kissing or like physical contact in that level, like we was not supposed to see that. It was I mean, always in movies and stuff though, right? Yeah, like, we seen it in movies, but you know, kids yo, know, mom be like, yo, close your eyes. Right? Um, you ain't seeing this shit. I mean, like, I mean, I feel like. We, I mean, at six for you. <laughs> yeah, you. It's like, uh, you had the, the binoculars, dog. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. And like for me, it's like even like you know, well, definitely, I feel like there's people like that are like also like extreme like me, you know, who grew up like just seeing everything super early. But then also, yeah, I think like in media, you know, it's like especially these days, like we see kids or people see it a lot more everywhere. Social media. It's everywhere, you know? I mean, you don't have to, like, like too many girls to get, you know, your whole social media feed flooded with girls, you know? You know, I just heard Twitch just change the rules on nudity. We changed it. Yeah. yeah. That's... They, changed, they changed it again because changed people it were complaining. Yeah, they changed it back. They, they, they toned it down a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I was just like, I mean, you know, it, it was weird because I was like, well, you guys was all aboard about this, but then all the negativity like made you resort it back. I'm like, that don't make any sense. That like, don't make sense. Did y'all not decide, think, bro. Yeah, I'm like, bro, are y'all just making these changes because what we've learned. Yeah, yeah like kid, I'm, I'm bad. My bad, kids. No, I'm go like, ahead, go ahead. I was thinking, I was like, what we've learned from that whole squ- whopping size is like, if you don't have an actual stance, you're gonna look stupid. Like, here's the thing: Disney's done their thing where they've been like very, very uh, inclusive, right? Prior to the, to, I have to say, to the detriment of them somewhat. And I think it's too much sometimes. Even me, like as a, as a color person, I'm like, I'd love to see. Like, I, I remember reading all that Ultimate stuff and being like, yo, Asian Hulk is dope. Nigga's cool as hell. He's better than the normal Hulk. I thought Miles Morales from the Ultimate Universe, dope as fuck. I'm happy he got his own movies. Sometimes I'm like, bro, do we need a, the, the Black Panther woman? Do we need the Iron Man woman? Do we need the, like, they just keep pushing it. They just keep doing no, it. You know, and it's it, cool. It's cool. But it's also like, it seems like they're forcing it after. I think there's the so here's my problem. Part of it. Yeah. My problem about that, and I, I've been talking about this for like three, four, four months, is that they don't create characters that have a progressive story. They just throw it in there and being like, yo, this this woman is strong. For example, Captain Marvel, right? Yeah, yeah. Captain Marvel is a prime example. Yeah. Yeah. She was a fucking pilot, bro. Who is related? To, who is related to a pilot? Yeah. Like what, what woman is going to relate to this pilot, bro? And there's a reason that we all love Spider-Man so much yeah. because he yeah. was the nerd geek like who also even when he got his powers was still going through it you know like his powers yeah. didn't solve a lot of his personal problems yeah and that was my we, issue 
Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Now I was gonna say why all of a sudden like Storm is like one of the most popular like female Marvel characters that everybody loves. It's because that like if you hear her story background and then how she got her power and then you know her being like a person of color and like that all of that with that lore and then her, her being who, who she is is great, right? Like we have Storm, Rogue, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was one of the faces of the Justice League. Yeah. More That's of a the face. Thing that, go they don't do. I, I'm noticing this because like Rogue and like all these characters, these these are cool characters. I like them all, honestly. And it's like I could I could do with more people being swapped over. It's fine. You're gonna make a new universe and so I'm it's cool. I think it's whatever. But it's like whenever they make these new characters, the reason it feels forced is because they make the women, specifically the women, they do this a lot. Like Ket Tomorrow was a perfect example, where she's just powerful. Yeah. She's not relatable at yeah. all. Yeah. That's, yeah. Just, just ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Every story I read, when I read a, a story about a hero story, generally, a hero story is the idea of a, a guy who's like somewhat, a lot of times peonic, like he's kind of lame. And then he like becomes that hero through this tribulation of like yeah. being Captain a loser America. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Captain America is a good, good example. You know yeah. who else is a good he example? Batman. That guy. Batman. Yeah. Batman even. It, it's a it's a normal guy fighting supervillains and shit. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's like these things are like it's cool to see him how they overcome the the problems that. But with Captain Marvel, it's like they're scared to let her just be a person. Yeah, she has. She feels she always even when she came in, she's like, "All right, I'm here to help you, Earthlings." So you know, like in uh, Endgame, you know, yeah, yeah, like she didn't really yeah. feel like a part of the team. She didn't really feel like she was, you know, like because like it's just aliens who were helping out, but she didn't really feel like she just felt like an assist character in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and then. And then that, that kills the, it kills the progression of the character because now I don't care. Yeah. Because I'm like, I already know why y'all putting her here is to make like women happy on the internet. But and I'm like, like, that's not how you do that. Exactly. I feel like they've done like amazing women characters. Like, like for me, I, like maybe I idealized the nineties, but like, I felt like a lot of the diversity they had in nineties, you know, felt pretty natural. And like, it was cool. Yeah. Think about like Captain Planet, Captain Planet. Uh, you know, like they came Magic from everywhere. Bus. Yep, Power Rangers. Power Rangers uh, recess. Ugh. You know, uh, Hey yeah. Arnold. Hey Arnold. It's yep. Stack Shock. Stack Shock. I mean, although I wish more people watched Stack Shock, I'm finding out a lot of people didn't watch Stack Shock. Yeah, that's crazy. But, <laughs> but you know, like it made me happy that like Stack Shock was a cool ass dude. Like who, you know, like who? Cool you, you know who? You know who was a ridiculous ass female character? Fucking Mission Impossible. What's that girl? Kim Possible. Oh, absolutely. Kim Possible. <laughs> Kim she was, was fantastic. What are we talking bro, about? Bro, she yes. was OD. Yes. Okay, okay. Let me make sure we're on the same page. Like, Kim Possible was sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We loved, we loved her. Yeah, we, we loved, loved Kim Possible. Yeah, like, you see, natural. Triple. Lilo yes. and Stitch. Like, you know, like, like I loved Lilo and Stitch. And, like, I I could jive with Lilo and her sister, Nani, right? And, like, they felt like normal people. Like in different parts of the world that I like, I might not have known about before, but they were dope. Yeah, yeah. I think they're missing the, the. I think the marketing team is missing the 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 angle they need. I feel like you have to start with an idea before you just, you know, like, hey, we're gonna build a character around the idea of her being a woman. Yeah, and just being like, she's powerful now. I think one of the best women characters I've ever seen was um, what's her face? I, I liked a uh, female Thor. I actually like female Thor more than I like normal. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Jen, Jean, yeah, Jen, uh, Jean Foster. Yeah, Jean Jane, Foster? yeah, Jane, Jane, Jane. Jane, I'm sorry, it's been a Jane long Foster. time. Yeah, I haven't read comics for a long time. She's cool. Yeah. yeah, Jane, I like. I enjoyed more than, um, uh, you know, standard uh, Thor. And that was actually, um, she had, she didn't have a movie. She was in uh, Love and Thunder. So yeah. she, she didn't, uh, but it was a really that movie. movie she sucked. Was in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, nobody liked that movie, though. Yeah, that movie I was sucked. okay with it, bro. I thought that shit was tear jerking. I was like, oh, really? Bro, the, the, villain, the villain carried the movie. Yeah. But them yeah. kids going out fighting and killing everybody, I was like, bro, come on, dog. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I feel you. I feel you. Like that was a corny scene. But uh, overall, I was like, her. if you read her through the comics, she's like a character who's going through cancer and stuff. And the reason she doesn't die is because she has. The helmet on because gods can't die of cancer when she's like that mm. so she's a whole character who has a whole thing going on where she's actually sickly as fuck when she puts that shit on she be, she be on her shit yeah she will, she will rock your shit dog yeah it's cold. yeah I, I feel great watching that shit i'm like yo because niggas, niggas be threatening her life when she's sick yeah <laughs> all, right, all right man i'll catch you in a second <laughs> it's yeah. cold bro uh, 
Yeah. So, you know, I just now the problem is it's just like, you know, the writing is bad. You know, they uh they always try to like throw some like political stance. Yeah. And it's like so obvious, bro. And it's like boring. Yeah, you know? it definitely has taken away from like uh the arts like as a whole. Like yeah, like when they like try to force it in. Um uh, and yeah, it's a bummer. Like, cause I definitely want like multiple groups to tell their stories, but it, when they start with that, I think you know, like, oh, we gotta, we gotta talk to this demographic group, you know, versus like we want to tell the story they, of this group. I think, right? Like, yeah. they did that with the the black people. I remember, and this is this is, I, I was laughing at it because I was, I remember this happening with with all the Marvel. You know how Marvel had all their little TV series popping off. Mm. They had like the the Winter Soldier and whoever, and they had yeah, all this Falcon. other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Rise of it Falcon. was like in fact we say whatever for Falcon. You know, we don't we, we don't like do people really super care about Falcon? Who cares about Falcon? Bro. Yeah, I just remember I was trying to watch. Him. I stopped after Loki, so I'm out of the I'm out of the, the Marvel. Show. Yeah, I, I, I haven't really jumped in in a minute. But it was like I remember what they would do every time. Whether it was Iron Man, it'd be like, Yo, here's Iron Man. Now here's the black war machine guy. Yo, like, oh, I know y'all love that. I know y'all love that. And then they do the same thing with 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 uh Captain. They say here's Captain America, but here's his boy Falcon, my yeah. boy. Here we go. You yeah. know we in it. We in it. We in it. Yeah. And they, they, did, they did it again, and they were just like, uh, it was the Winter Soldier, and then he had some random ass black dude with him that dies or something like that. And I was like, why do y'all keep pairing off black people? Like, supposed to give a fuck now? And I'm like. Where are the Hispanic actors? Yes. Where are the Indian actors? I haven't seen a single Indian superhero, a man, a man, not once. Because you're just so focused on black people. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, I don't know who's running out of diversity shit, but like, I think if you're gonna do it, make it mimic reality, bro. Indian people exist. It's not just white and black people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a dose of Asian women, like, right. a while, yeah. bro. The more there's more than just. The standard groups, I guess, right? I don't know. It even feels like the standard the box I don't even know what that means. Yeah. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel real. Like not like when I played uh what was it, Apex Legends? I remember when I played that game. It's a diverse cast. Yeah. Bro, and it felt like, real. Yeah. I like I like the uh the medic girl. She's she got like, I like her. Oh, the little Caribbean shit? Yeah. She got that language. Lifeline. Yeah, Lifeline. She got that accent and shit. I'm wild. She could <laughs> Loba brought me back to yeah. the game for a bit. And like Lifeline Caribbean Loba is uh what is she like? French? She's French. She's a colored French woman. She's like, she's like mixed French. Oh, okay. and then uh, yeah, okay. Lifeline is right. is a black girl from the Caribbean, and then I played Crypto, which is a a fucking Korean guy. Like yeah. that's just character picks. We we were all over the board just now. She's cool. Like yeah. it felt normal. It didn't feel like this is the strong woman character, and here's the other strong ass yeah. woman. We're gonna give her here's all the these like, dude. We're just gonna give her all these like godlike elements, and I'm like, bro, that's why that shit is trash. And that's why, like, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, here we go, the flow chart. Yeah, the flow chart, yeah. Yep, yeah. flow chart. You, you say all these things. that way, yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I remember where we, I, I I brought that up initially, the Marvel shit, to bring, to come back to a point y'all were talking about previously, but there's no way I'm going to figure that shit out now. We were, just, talk, we were just talking about, like, uh, like these, these movies not being as interesting to watch yeah. because uh, they will, like, make female leads, like, that they, they just... We'll just write them as like these. They're like checklists. Characters. They're like checklists versus okay, yeah. like actual characters that people. And we're like talking about not. we're talking about Disney a little bit too. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm a little weird about Disney because Disney be doing some like weird ass shit with the yeah. remember the whole uh, the whole Cinderella with the Nikes and shit. I was, that was crazy. Oh, you didn't see it? So there was like this dude. Like I don't know what it is. But it was like this Cinderella version of like basketball shoes. Y'all didn't see that trailer? No. That shit is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm not going to watch. <laughs> I haven't now? watched, like, any... I feel like I haven't watched, like, any live-action remakes of, of Disney movies. Any of them. And then, what else? Yeah, I just... I just keep hoping that, like, they're going to get good. Like, I, I watch uh, some of the movies on the planes, and they're sometimes pretty good. I like Turning Red. Uh, I liked... Um, Inside Out, Elemental was fine. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like not be like such a hater of like old of new stuff, but at the same time, yeah, it doesn't like hit like it, it used to, which which is always Wally. Yeah, bro, you know we'll never get movies like Rush Hour to hit like that ever. <sighs> and that's what Jack, I want though. Like I Jackie think I want Chan, some realness. Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan went and at a, a a like a little like bar, went to the pool table and was like, "What's up, my niggas?" 
And he was like, what did you just say? Yeah. He, he repeated it and started fighting, bro. Oh, bro. my goodness. That was crazy. Nobody didn't say anything about that, but that that scene was so funny. I loved and it. And just so intense at the same time. I loved that, it. He's back to a point Godzilla brought up earlier, where I think a lot of times, and you, you brought this up too, kids. It's like, there's a point where um, it's okay to feel uncomfortable about something. And I think it's okay to have your suspicions about things. I think it, the, the, when you push it to the point where you're just like, there's no remorse. We need to cancel this person. And I think when it gets a little bit too much. Yep. Uh, something, something wrong with you. Like, I, like we said earlier, when we were talking about all people and like when things happen, I don't know this person doesn't hate black people. So I don't feel comfortable about that joke. I don't feel comfortable with that person making that joke or the word nigga. I say it all the time well, around like certain people anyway. I don't say it around yeah. specific people because I know white people get uncomfortable. It, right, yeah. Yeah. Specifically around white people, I know they get uncomfortable. So I, I try to keep it away from them. I, I try to shield their eyes, but uh, or their ears. But it's like my thing is like a lot of times uh, these things. Is like if my friend, if I have a friend and they want to say the N word, like because he was saying, I'd be like, bro, it sounds weird when you you know it sounds a little odd. Like if you want to say it, if that's how he's always said it, if he's a white dude from like Detroit and he's always said it, I don't care. But I'd be like, I need you to know that there's some people who aren't me. <laughs> who are who you know they're also colored and they and might not know what you're saying that yeah. like you're aware of that that's why you don't say it. you don't say it because of any other weird reason yeah. but it's like i feel like when you just get mad at people first and it becomes it's like we got to cancel this dude uh with the matt rife shit all yeah. this stuff i feel like it's just too much yeah. i think I there's like, gotta be a level of like hey we could just some balance do, do you understand yeah. why you're telling me about to do this thing? the other side right yeah i, just don't, think, I don't like the it. fact that there are people in this world that has no like investment into these people that they hear, but they want to invest into getting rid of this person's livelihood. I think that is the most corniest thing ever. Yeah. I don't think that's like I said. I don't like the fact there are people that are not heavily invested into the people uh, that they don't like, but they're heavily invested into getting rid of getting rid of their livelihood. Like mm-hmm. they will rather like they they'll read like a topic on this person, and that's instantly who they are as a person. And they would do whatever they their best to like tear down who yeah. they are. And like you know, I was born and raised to like. There's two things that you don't mess with: a person's family, uh, um, and a person's money, mm-hmm. right? You don't mess with those things, right? That that's one of the two things that you don't ever mess with. And like seeing people just like, well, are excited to see people lose their job and be like, good riddance. It's some yeah. of the most weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's, I've convinced myself it's got to be kids, bro. On Twitter and shit, because we can't see that we can't see them. There's no photos on Twitter. Like you got just your profile, everything else is hidden. So it's like people on Twitter have the loudest voices. But I'm like, are we sure this not at 13 year old just reciting some shit he heard from somebody else? I'm always convinced. I'm like, it's got to be a child. <laughs> yeah, there's no way this is an adult. Like, it's weird, man. Yeah, it's a lot. I, I I think that I think that is not okay. And um, you know, I was a victim of part of it. You know, panda. Oh, panda shit. Whole oh yeah. yeah. You know, the panda thing was literally a he say, she said. And um, because uh, people, you know, and we, we, we see this, what people like to do is that as long as you uh, be claimed the victim first on the Internet and be like, yeah, you know, I'm all about the community. So, like, this is why I was doing this. And these guys were trying to take our community away from us. Those are buzzwords that people use. Right. And then it cost it 100 and 40 plus people's jobs gone. And people and people were saying good riddance. Can fuck, you uh, talk fuck. about that? Yeah. Now or is that like still No, it's gone. We done. <laughs> it's okay. Like, yeah, it, it yeah, I remember we we went to get into it before but you know, we was closer to the time so I was like, yeah, if you could go into that. So, pretty much um Panda uh the the CEO and I'll be honest, the CEO definitely made a huge mistake. And the huge mistake is uh, not reading the room, right? Not reading the room. That's a huge skill set. And I'm going I'm to make the highest assumption that he did not have that skill set. He did not read the room. And these people was not about you. Uh, they were about themselves and excluded you out of it for a good reason. And, well, a good reason in their eyes. And that reason was because you were with Nintendo. And uh, it was a guy that was trying to, like, do his absolute best to make everyone get paid. His whole goal was to make Smash Brothers to be like the 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 most money success in like their in East Coast, right? He 
he wanted everybody to make money off it, right? He said, there's no way while the, the top eight, the top 1% shouldn't be getting money. Uh, it's only getting money. I want that, I want that uh, 5% or that 8% to make money of what they're making from the 1%, right? And like obviously stack it up and higher and things like that, right? And for him to do that, he had they had to find a, a middle ground to pretty much uh, make a tour that is like uh, Nintendo certified that kind of like built a wall towards all the other event organizers because you don't need like a, you know, you basically need like a license to run like big events depending on how big your event was. And pretty much what happened is for people to have to go through the approval of what they did took five, six, seven, eight years, not months, years. So what Panda did was like, well, for me to like skip all of the steps, just join the Panda Cup. And then you automatically are certified. It's like a protection, right? It's like, yo, like just join it. And like, you don't have to worry about this. You don't got to worry about your event being canceled, right? And people heard those specific words from a person that they didn't like, but he thought that he was helping them out. It became aggression. It became like those like fighting words. And obviously, at that point, there was like, if I'm going down, he, they're going down with me. Uh, and basically, they made the decision to out the fact that Panda said, said uh, Nintendo did this, and uh, behind it was out. And like the fact that they said that was so fucked up. Because wait, they said they said what? Say it again. They said Nintendo and Nintendo and Panda. Uh, well, Nintendo is uh, closing down. Or shutting down, gave us the C and D, you know, shutting us down and things like that. And one of the biggest person behind it was the CEO, was Alan. Like he knew about it. Oh. And I'm just like, why would you like throw that out in that heated situation? You know, like because now everybody's going to be like, "Yo, Alan, what, what the fuck?" And like they play victim, right? And Alan said in the thing, he was like, "Yo." Honestly, I don't know how long uh, uh, BTS is going to like, st- uh, um, uh, what is it, be uh, uh, beyond the summit. I don't know how long they're going to last because they lost the license of uh, Dota. And then four months later, they announced closure. And I'm like, bro, like, he knew all of this, but he was trying to, like, get these guys on board with us. So... Everybody could just do what they do without having to go go through the whole license. And, you know, all the big names, all the big guys, uh, because they are close with these guys, they're going to play, quote, unquote, devil's advocate, but also lean towards the people that, you know, give them money, you know, or, like, give them opportunities. And Allen was pretty much fighting the whole community at that time. And, like, once you, like, are in bad blood with any like with the Smash players, bro. You could be right. You done. Yeah. And then out of fear, because people were doxing and hacking people and like doxing their address and things like that, people left out of fear. And a lot of people left too because they were like, "Yo, the Smash community is all I got. If they hate me, because they were like, "Yo, if you stay on this team, I'm done supporting." You. So now you gotta make a choice. And some people Smash got is a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. Really. And some people got kids. Some people had kids. And you gotta think. You gotta think of your kid. You gotta think of like your mm-hmm. your born, your newborn, right? So they left out of fear, and like that's why everything wrapped up. And the biggest icing on the cake was um, and what and you know I got it confirmed by the person, the, the CEO, was that uh, if they was gonna do an invitational of the smash, uh, of the smash finals, uh, but what happened was is Lud Ludwig made an invitational on that same day. And that on purpose. Yeah, that yep, on purpose. And um, you know, because you couldn't meet the sponsors agreement, you gotta pay all that money back. And guess how much money that they paid back back in sponsorships? Two point five million dollars. <laughs> Done. Yeah. That kills Done. it. Imagine canceling your event at the convention center in LA in LA. Done. 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 
that that changed my life a lot. You know why? Because I I now see how dangerous it is in the internet. I see how dangerous it, dangerous it is. I understand that like there are people that are in this world that just they just wait for you to make a mistake. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm downfall. But uh, you know, and like as you like learn about that, you just stop giving a fuck. You like. I not I got nothing to hide. I'm gonna be who the fuck I am, and I'm gonna say who I you know say what I feel, and like if that uh, offends you, then like you know maybe you should talk to me, and then like you will learn not to be offended. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking to me rather than you hearing about. Me. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always people always get offended when they hear something, but when you talk yeah. to the person directly, it's a different energy. You know how many times so many people came to me in person? They was like, "Yo, man." I came to your chat and I, I came a bit crazy and I was a bit hostile towards you, but I just want you to say I apologize because you're one of the reasons why I got into in fighting games, but like I just didn't agree with this. And we had a whole blown conversation. And he was like, you know, talking to you in person, like I feel like I, I see it because now you're looking at me. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what well, the nigga? But and, you know, but obviously like I have to be like, yeah, man, like that's just how it is, bro. Yeah, you're being patient. It's best. Yeah, yeah. yeah but People you know just what realize I mean? you have humanity, right? Yeah, no, that works like 99 percent of the time. Because I, I, when you were saying that, like, you talk to a dude, you know, you you hear a bunch of stuff, stuff about somebody, but when you talk to them, you'll realize who they really are, yep. right? And then you can yeah. make a real judgment. You can make yeah. the actual judgment. Yeah. That you know who who that who I wanted that to work for, and it made it worse. <laughs> Low tier God. We'll get on to that some other time, of course. <laughs> but you know, that dude, he started talking more, and I was like, bro, please stop. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, honestly, man, he, he's actually doing really great now. And he's actually... He seems like he's trying to do better. I, I think I think he found a flow chart where he could be who he is, and I think he learned from this mistake, and I think he became more broader than ever. And he's funny as fuck, bro. So, like, I'm glad to see that. I, I never, like I said, I'm never about a person... Uh, taking their job, I I I I respect the fact that he got banned on every platform and he yeah. came back stronger, bro. Like he actually came back bigger. That is so impressive. You can't take he's been that doing away. a lot of he's been doing a lot of work on uh he's been jumping into other people's streams and showing up that way, having like little like little things. That's where I started seeing him again. Cause I thought he was done, done. Cause when I started him get banned, I was sad. Cause like to be honest with you, uh, I know he barely considers uh us the same species, but it's like, <laughs> to be honest with you, it's like when he was getting, when he would get like angry, it didn't make me happy. Like I, I don't really, t- I'm not the type of person who gets happy to see someone else family yeah, like same. that. It's, it makes you feel bad. I'm like, I, bro, I, I, I hope laugh at his out. rants. His rants are hilarious. Yeah. 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 I don't, I'm not laughing at him being mad. I'm laughing at like him just being like, yo, you know why I don't like this dude because he's a scrub and like, you know, things like that. So I laugh yeah. at that because I'm like, bro, like I, I know like when, when you're playing like fighting games and like somebody does some scrubby shit, it's like you want to say that, but you just like, oh my God, you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like he's that guy that yeah, just he says, says it. Yeah. He just says it, you know what I mean? But I don't get, I don't go there to like look for him to get mad. But go ahead yeah. with what you're saying. Right. Yeah, no, I feel you. I'm, I'm on that same place. I don't really go there. I was always kind of, to be honest, even when I was talking to JV about this in the past, I've always kind of rooted for him. Like, I'm like, man, I hope, hope he figures it out. Yeah, hope he yeah. figures out how to like control that anger, whatever it might be. Yeah. Same. But, it was like, then he came back, and I was like, when he got shut down, I was sad. I was like, damn, because the internet yeah. was finally, he's gone. And I was like, that's I was like, that's lame, bro. Just gonna put his, yeah, this is his work. I'm yeah. like, my man doesn't have any money. Now he's got to, because what is it? I think he's a little bit older than us, guys. So I'm, I'm like, bro, now he got to go figure out how to make, a, you know, a new living out here. Yeah, that's that a lot. That is not easy, bro. That's a lot. As, as, as a man, life, that like, is not work. easy, bro. You can't just right. walk somewhere and just be like, yo, hire me. Yeah, I just dedicated twelve years of streaming. Now I'm doing nothing. Yeah, it's like, that's a lot. Yeah, but it's like then he came back and he showed up on a. It was Destiny stream I saw him on. Uh, he he popped on some debates and stuff like that, and I was like, God, this man's opinions are terrible, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it, it's but he's not a dick. Yeah, he's not a dick anymore. So that's he, great. Uh, Redemption, I, you know, I to personally for me, like seeing like where he's at now, like um. You know, the fact that he got his YouTube banned, he got his, he, he, he always got like massively uh, reported. So like, you know, he, he got his Twitter accounts deleted and things like that. And then he always remade, 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 remade. And now he's at a point now where he just has his own crew. He has his own clique. And like, you know, they just talk about just like daily life stuff. And like, you know, now he's, he's way more positive. Like if you see some of the stuff he talks about, he's like, 
super positive. He tell you, he's like, man, I'm done playing fighting games because it just it just brings the worst out of me. And like these guys, and he was like, these guys don't deserve my time. And it's true because people, all people did was watch him and instill his content. And like it was nothing he could do about it. Flip him. Yeah. yeah, and I thought I thought that was wrong. And like you know, even though he might have been a dick back in the day, and like again, we all grow in like different times, right? You know, even and like even was he a dick back in the day? People provoked him, and like no one no one holds that accountable. Like, yeah, you also provoked the dude, right? You poked the bear. You know what I mean? Like you fucking poked the bear. So like, don't be surprised that the bear just like ripped your arm off, and like feel bad for the bear. You know, like or, or feel bad for you because you poked the bear. Yeah. Like I'm gonna give him fifty fifty on that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you fifty fifty on that, kids. I feel like sometimes they provoke him. No, that, that's that's okay. Where, that's okay. Yeah, sometimes he would just be out of pocket. I was like, bro, that man is in a wheelchair. Yeah, Why are you so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That? yeah, I, I, I agree. I think those things are fucked up. But I'm saying also like, like don't like don't also like remember that there are people are provoking him as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying sure. like he's perfect. I'm saying like. It's a 50-50. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on your side. Yes. It's a 50-50. Yeah. I know, like, some of the crowd, he was saying he was some out of pocket shit with Broly legs and shit like that. But I also bro. watch people, like, provoke him. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, what you expect? You know what I mean? Like, why I like agree. why would you, like, teabag him and then go to his stream and then you get your feelings hurt because he says something wrong about you? Yeah. Like, but you teabagged him and you, like, you, you were messing around with him. Like, what you expect for somebody who's a dick? To be to right. do a dick shit, so like ho- be also be accountable, you know. Like if I, I go, if I go to the hood and I like shoot a dude up, and then like I'm like, yep, I'm good. You don't think his homie gonna come and find me, dog? Yeah. And then and then everybody like, yo, man, he was such a good kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was a good kid. <laughs> he, did he didn't do it wrong. Wrong. All he did was watch Yu Yu Hockey Show and play fucking fighting games. He did. He was never into that shit. Yeah. What you expect? Nah, nah I, th- I think it's all best for him. Oh, but at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, like he did some fucked up shit. But I, I like the uh, the progression redemption. of people. I like the redemption art, and yeah. he's better than ever. And I support that. That's dope. I support people who are bettering themselves yeah. and better like in he, their livelihood. He's doing better, and I'm happy that he's making his money again. That's yes. what, that's what's like. I like that, like it seems like there's a progression, and he's he's back on his and shit, he, so he can you know live. I feel like he's that's making good. more money than he made before. That's good, Thank and God, that's great. Bro. Yeah, I'm I'm happy for him. So shout out to them. I'm really happy. There's no ill will towards him. Like I'm, you know, I know a lot of I people. Agree. They're just mad because they're mad because of shit he said ten years ago. Yeah, but like bro, yeah. like it's Please. we're we're about to be 2024, dog. You yeah. can't bring up an eight years ago video and like hold somebody accountable eight years ago. Right, like, like the thing unless is, like, they all... unless they are still the same. Yes, that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, still consistent. Absolutely no change. Yes, let's get on them. Yeah, I feel I've always find it like horrible when like, people pull up tweets from twelve years ago as if the whole internet wasn't going crazy. You know, like saying Bro. Atlanta shit at the same time. Yeah, right? you know, back in the time when we was kids, you know, we used to like with the, the homies like. Oh, bro, you acting gay right now. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, that, we that's, we that's, all said that, and it's like, but we never said it towards a gay person. Exactly. You know? And it also, if you're doing that today, do. if you're doing that today, still, then it's like, all right, now we can talk about it, right? Versus, right. Like exactly. You said it back in the day. We stopped talking. The meaning has shifted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the meaning exactly. Back to where it's originally at, so now we don't use that. Like, yeah, that. we don't need that's that word exactly. anymore. Exactly. Now, now we just like, yo, you being a bitch because we adults now, right? <laughs> so now you're like, yo, man. You, <laughs> that's going to change up too, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. they started taking that word away. I'm like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> too short will be in comatose. <laughs> yeah, you know? So, but it's stuff like that, but, you know. I feel um, that. I feel that. You know, the, the world is, is going to, like, the better, but there's a lot of bad. Um, I, I, I can't stand the bad shit. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna complain about it because, again, like, there's no. It's not gonna solve anything. I'm only just gonna be like how everybody else complaining about every little thing. Yeah. So I, if if somebody talks about it, I, I'm like very strong about it, and um, you know, I'm always open to like checking out what other people have to say, yeah. and like take what they have to say, and like maybe I'll learn something. You know, like today, you know, I was like, you know, maybe I'm thinking. I've been thinking like when you guys were talking, especially Josh, I was like, maybe there are 12 year olds that actually know who they are. And I was like, maybe that's a perspective that I should probably like think about. But I never thought about it like that because when I was twelve, I didn't, have, you know, fucking plan. I would look into. I would on that point even. I would look into like to after this conversation, look into uh, what happens if they decide to go against the treatment. Like if I did go on hormone replacement at twelve, 
could I reverse it? How easy it is for the women and the men? That'd be the next thing I would look up. Um, I need to go do that myself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because like if it's a if it's an easy procedure to go back and be like, oh yeah, it'll take you six months, but you'll be back to standard levels, whatever, with like maybe not as strong as you would have been or something. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, but yeah, twelve man. I was definitely watching my zoids, and I knew I was a little boy on the research. Yeah, action I mean, I was, man, action man, Max Steel. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was. I thought I was cool as hell, bro. I was not yeah. thinking I was a girl. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. you whoop my ass to tell me I was a girl. Yeah, you know, I, I never thought in my mind. So, but you know, you know, I think yeah, all different types of folks. I guess, like you know, like I, I can agree with you for sure. You know, like I, I get that, especially like me, you, us, how we grew up, right? But I guess, like, I'm trying to allow for more people to be able to live their truth right and hey you know because i even think like okay well my potential kids you know want to go through that and that'll definitely be a, a conversation i'll have to have with them to be like how serious are we but then also like how is medical science now you know like in the future whenever i have a kid that's like old enough so you know 20 years from now i, I think we're good though because like yeah. i i think just even having us talk about this is important yeah. because black people tend to be very behind when it comes to this type of stuff yep when it comes yeah. to like, it's weird. 50 years but yeah 50 years behind bro yeah <laughs> bro it's like no who was it uh, it was d wade had his uh his daughter, daughter. you know transitioned mm -hmm. and it was like he was supported yeah, and then the because, community, the community was going down on him, like, like how yeah, can't just ripped him up? Yeah, yeah, like, like oh, he's only happy for the cameras. I'm like, how are you gonna tell this man he's only happy for the cameras when he's talking about supporting his child? Yeah, and then like, hanging out. If he just them. loves his child, bro, what if that's what that is? He said, if that's what it is, I'm for you. Yeah, I'm. You know, like the fact that like it's just like yo, it's a public. Stuff. I'm like, bro, that's your kid. You're not gonna do anything for a public stuff for your kid. No, you you yeah, going to do it crazy. because you actually love your kid, you know. Like even um even um Dam it was a Damian Wayne, uh, his kid recently came out as like trans, and he said he told the story. He was like, "Yo, at first it was really hard for me. I didn't understand, but at the end, I love my child." That is not a stunt. Yeah, <laughs> that's Damn, real. You know, that's, that's being real. real. Yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful shit. Yeah, like, that's them. That's still them. Exactly. Yeah. Like, their lives. Overall, it's just like let people live the life that they need to live, right? And yeah, like even like, I think like like hmm, this is a whole conversation for sure. You know, like I would definitely we gotta get you back here to talk some more. Yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, it was nice meeting you, Josh, and thank you again, God. Bro, this, this was like a really. I didn't know oh. I was going to have this much fun. Good. Hey, that's what we tried. But, to do, you know, like, but I, I will. I will. If whenever that time may be. If the people want it, I would love to come back here. We would love to have you back on, man. You just dude, let like me know. Just let me I was like, we're getting into it. And <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I want to talk some more. But at the same time, I'm also like, ah, let's save it for next time. Because you got to Let's walk. talk real quick, kids. Let's talk. Oh, because, shit. Uh, you, you know, you ain't know. Hold on. Hold on, boy. Damn, work. Now, he over here, he over here big bro with me again, bro. Here's the crazy thing, kids. We had actually met prior. I know. You I remember. I, no, I remember. I, I didn't. We met recently. We met. We, we met, met. We met at a um. There was like a a movie release. Yes. We met there. I looked. I was looking. I'm like, bro. I definitely. I was like, I definitely. He said, Yo, Josh. Good meeting you, my nigga. Yeah. I said, hold on. Yeah. I didn't want. I didn't want to make the assume assumption, but I was. <laughs> I I it bro. was definitely at the Hollywood. It was like it was at the yeah, yeah, yeah. launching. Of that one movie. That movie was not bad, by the way. Uh, nah, uh, I'm being goofy. And honestly, it's easy for me to remember you, of course, because like I'd actually seen your content prior when you were with like Smug and all them. So I'd seen your shit uh, back when I was doing competitive stuff. So it's like, yeah, it makes sense. I definitely sense. knew who you were. I just didn't want to make that assumption. I feel I was, that. I, I, I didn't want to make it, like, wrap it up and then be like, that was the awkward thing. I was like, well, <laughs> I know you're not. I know you're not all type shit. Uh, but I definitely, I'm glad you said that because I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely met. It was literally at the movie. I, 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 I was like, man, he looks familiar, but I don't want to say it. Because we just jumped, jumped right in. more money now, bro. You know how it is, guys. I know, right? up, uh, 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 <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Dude, yeah. it's a pleasure. I'm glad. There we go. Now we all know each other. Definitely got to yeah. be back on for more because I feel like we just started this conversation. Like, like yeah. there's a lot more in it. There's a lot more in it. I didn't you know we're going this level, but I love it. That's what we do. Try to do. Thank yeah. you so much, man. Dude, where can hey. people find you, by the way? Uh, you can find me at Kizzy underscore K on Twitter. Dope, dope. Uh, Kizzy K on um, YouTube. And then Kizzy K three one zero three one zero. 
uh, at Twitch. My community is mad diverse. We all we all mad cool. We just want to play fighting games and talk shit and make like you know they they clown that shit that I talk about. Love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Conversations like this, I definitely gotta jump on the Twitch. Yeah, it's good vibes and stuff. You know, I, and like I said, man, I I support all people of color and you know trends and. Uh, women, of course. So even I people who play modern that. controls. Even people who play modern controls. Even the modern. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so like, just because we having a intense uh, conversation about shit that is not okay, does not mean you're not okay. Yeah. I yep. like that. You're great. I like that. Thank you so much, man, dude. It's an absolute pleasure. Definitely gotta bring you back on. Appreciate awesome. you. Appreciate you, Josh, and everyone listening all the way through. Appreciate you. Stay dope. Peace. Peace. <laughs>